a stroll downtown this evening When I heard music echo through the night The same old songs that I heard the night before So I started running so I wouldn't be too late I didn't think that I would ever see your face again But I was wrong Thank you for watching the After Files live stream. This is not a professional production. We don't know why anyone watches this thing, but we're glad you do. And now, to kick off the show is everyone's favorite sidekick. The one, the only, Hecklefish. That's good. Yeah, that's on. Yes, hello. This is thumbs up. Thumbs up from the producers. All right, I see the producers in the green room there. Who who's logged in with the with the tonguey the tonguey smiley winky? That's Victoria. Okay, I don't know because because there was one live stream not too long ago where I accidentally publicly posted the link to get into the behind like the backstage green room, and uh, people clicked it. People people clicked that link. Uh, what do we got for count tonight? I saw, I think we hit 40,000, which is pretty good for a ghost episode. As, as you know, I'm not a huge fan of those, but, uh, but a lot of folks ask for paranormal stuff. And I thought that was fun. We made it sciencey. Um, it was funny to watch the chat because, uh, 40403 says Jenny down below 40,000. That's, that's, that's pretty good. That's more than I thought. Because we were holding at twenty five, twenty eight thousand for a while, and uh, I thought it was going to kind of hang out there. Because I feel like the you've got the ghosts crowd, like the paranormal crowd, and you've got the conspiracy, dark story crowd, and um, there's certainly there's crossover, but I feel like it's two different crowds. But right, hang, hang on, G Gino's texting me. Turn on monetization. Yeah, that's that. That's the one. It's the one reason that you can interrupt the show with a text is to remind me about monetization. But yes, it's turned on. We do not like to uh, to forget that. That's expensive. Aishiwawa. So yeah, I know there's crossover with people with the ghosts and the conspiracies, but it's it's there are plenty of folks who are not are not in the crossover, and I, I'm kind of not there either. Um, I don't believe in ghosts in like the traditional haunting sense we were talking about this in the uh in the in the pre-show on discord which by the way if you're a patreon member every week before we we do the live premiere we're we're on discord for patreon members only it's a live stream but everybody's camera is on so it's a great perk if you uh if you want to support the channel uh patreon is the way to do that so um so we were talking about it in in the in the discord stream earlier that i don't really believe in the in like the haunting type ghosts 
but I do believe that something happens. I don't know if there's an afterlife. I'd like to believe there is, but I don't really know. But I, but like in those few minutes, you know, when you go, because uh, one of one of our uh, patrons was telling a story about how he was in a car um, driving down a road, and uh, well, that's where cars usually go. And a few cars away from him was was a friend who passed away at that moment, and he said that. At that moment, he felt the presence of this person sort of wash over him with the sense that, uh, you know, it's uh, everything's going to be okay. He felt like, tell my sister everything's going to be okay. And then it was, it, and then the experience was kind of over. That I kind of believe that a little bit. You know, at that moment where you're just passing through, maybe you have some awareness of both sides. But I'm, willing to admit that it could just be wishful thinking. You know, Gino was there with dad when he passed away about a year and a half ago. And, um, and maybe I, I, I don't really want to have him tell that story, but there was sort of the sense that, um, that dad was like looking out. Uh, I'm going to look at Gino to see if I'm getting that right. It, it was almost like a surprised look on his face, which I think without, that would be my face. I, you know, you, at the moment you die, you're like, whoa, so it's legit. It's real. And then, and that's it. Um, I don't know why everyone's telling me happy birthday today. <laughs> um, I, I, maybe that's something that, that started in a chat somewhere. I appreciate the birthday wishes. It's very nice. Um, uh, but my birthday's in March. So I don't, I don't know. That's, that's just, that's one of the many rumors circulating around the internet. Now my my false birthday's out there. You know, there's a lot of upside with having a a channel with a couple of million folks, but there is downside. There is considerable downside. And that and that is that is rumors and speculation about your personal life, which isn't as interesting as people think. Uh, flash the cat. So let's see who is here. And tell me in the chat where you stand on ghosts, believers or, or disbelievers. It looked pretty evenly split during the premiere. Um, I see Daniel Clancy's there. There's Iron Jason, Paul Wright. I see you, Anthony Bissett, Skyler, the creator. Fabio Santos is here. Cuddly Choya, Jason, Mary, DSDRN, very reliable. Rogue RR, Jesse Cervantes, A's, uh, Arizona Cowboy One, Matt B, Don M. I'm noticing like on my chat, is it just my browser or does everyone have this? I've got little hearts at the bottom. I'm looking at, is this a new thing? Victoria's nodding. And things are, hearts are floating. Uh, I see I'm getting the, the, the party favors. I'm assuming those are our birthday wishes. That's, that's very, very nice. All right, so we're going to do kind of a light show tonight which I know is going to disappoint Victoria. She likes she likes when we do the five-hour shows. We're going to do a light show, um, mostly just AMA, Q&A type stuff. Not going to read any long Reddit posts tonight. Um, we do have a very good Geno story hour, though. I'm looking forward to this one. Um, here's the tease. Remember the Challenger disaster? The space shuttle crashed and, and, uh, and the astronauts all died? Um, newsflash, they didn't die. They're still among us. So uh, Gino's going to tell that story and, and provide some photo evidence. So if you guys don't know that conspiracy, it's a great one. Walkers in the Wild wants to believe. Becky Watt believes. Johnny Patterson wants to believe. I, and I think that's a good response. Is uh, If you ask someone, do you believe in ghosts? It, it, a good, logical, open mind uh, response is, I want to believe. And we we had I mean we had one person in, in the Discord stream said um, there is something after for a fact, but I'm still waiting for the video evidence. It hasn't come through yet. Maybe it's going to be emailed because um, I'm because the evidence would be super. And um, any ghost hunters here? I think I covered the main the main gadgets. Um, I don't believe those gadgets work. The ovulus, uh, the, the ovulus is um, that one. That one's hilarious, and it because it it detects all kinds of stuff, and then it gives you 
words that it's picking up from, I guess, energy. And it, and it just, it's like three random words. And that is, that is pure pareidolia when you, because if you're a, if you're a hardcore believer in ghosts and you get three random words on that machine, you're going to make them, you're going to make a sentence out of it. What did Zach have? He had like table scent, uh, uh, what was it? Wedgie. He had like, they didn't make any sense, but he made a sentence out of it. He made it work. Um, I hope Bacon's doesn't watch this channel. Went after him hard tonight. And look, his show's full of shit, but I have heard that he's a very nice guy in person. But the show is still full of shit. Uh, Sebastian Smith says the gadgets work, just not for ghost hunting. That's fair. I mean, uh, uh, an electromagnetic field detector, I believe those detect EM fields. I mean, I saw dem putting the, the episode together, I saw plenty of people demoing it, which um, it actually surprised me how well the ghost versions of that device worked. Because you can buy normal EMF detectors that you would like use for actual science. But the ghost versions, they seem to be okay. There are plenty of fake ones though. So be careful. Um, I linked to some places where you can buy some of that stuff. Um, and there are affiliate links. So if you buy that stuff, I'll make money. Don't buy any of that stuff. Don't, not, don't buy a single one of those products. Um, I definitely don't buy them on Timu. Uh, Richard Bramlett dropping very strong plugs tonight. I appreciate that. Uh, Chrome wants to know when the moon base episode is dropping. That's going to be a while Chrome because we've got plenty of episodes booked already. And I don't have as much flexibility as I used to because a lot of them are sponsored. So it's a whole, the sponsors are a whole thing. You know, they need to know what the episode's about, the gist of it. We can't, give them like the full episode because it, I don't have it until a few days before because I'm constantly late. So the sponsors need that. And then we have to write the commercial for them and back and forth and have them approve it and make sure we're saying all the words. So, um, so, so episodes that are sponsored, they're, they're pretty much booked in the calendar and the moon will have to wait, but the moon's on the list. Let me look at Jenny's face down there. The moon, the next moon is on the list. And another, another, um, sort of part two episode that I think is on the list is the Eba one story who was the alien pilot recovered from the Roswell crash in 1947 that, um, that was taken to Los Alamos and lived there until 1952 before he died. He's the one that liked strawberry ice cream. He's the Richard Doty, uh, story. Ganja farmer. Do animals have ghosts too? You know, I, you've heard me talk about the, um, sort of the uh, the interest I have in, in the life between lives, you know, like th th those theories, those books. And um, and those theories are, are about how there's a, a universal energy, right? And a lot of religions uh, take this approach. There's universal energy that's part of everything. And when we're born, a little piece of that universal energy breaks off and lands in us and becomes our soul. And, and then we have free will and we have a, an, an identity and ego. And then when we die, we go back to the universal energy and we take our experiences with us and it, that contributes to the whole. And then we're kind of part of the one thing again. Um, I don't know if I fully believe it, but it, it but if I had to get very spiritual, that I, that I would subscribe to that. I'm down with it. And again, it could just be because I like it. But anyway, a lot of those belief systems that believe that animals are not part of it, um, which is too bad <laughs> because- How about telling them about the Wi-Fi store? No, we're not going to do March just yet. We're still warming up. Um, because uh, th there's how many of us, you know, when when- when you finally get there and you're looking at the light at the end of the tunnel and maybe it's, it's your mom reaching out or Nana or whoever it is, don't you want to look down and see those dogs and cats and animals that you had throughout your life? I certainly do. I, I, I can't even really get too much into it because I'm going to start to uh, start to get choked up and crying is usually gold, but, uh, but I'm not man enough to do it on, on the live stream. Lord Guru, I see you. Uh, MX John McAfee episode. So there's so much to uncover there. There is, but I, YouTube would crush would crush that um, John McAfee, and it's he. It's, he's a great story. So many good conspiracies around him. Um, 
but you know, we're working on a couple of things that maybe give us the opportunity to to tell those stories that we can't necessarily tell on YouTube. I haven't mentioned it much. I'll start talking about it a little bit on the live stream. But in a few weeks, uh, the Y Files Operation Podcast. I don't know if you're aware of this, but we have a podcast. Uh, currently, all it is is just the YouTube videos. So there, if you if you watch those, there's no reason for you to check it out. But if you're on Spotify, you can see the videos, um, all the videos that we have here without the ads. Or I guess maybe Spotify throws their own ads in. I don't know if it's better or worse, but but they're there. And then that, and then the audio version of the show goes out everywhere. So Apple and Audible, wherever you listen to podcasts, and it's just the show that you've already seen. But in a few weeks, we're going to start mixing in long form audio stories, and then it's when we can, you know, kind of get our legs under us, that will be a, a, a weekly thing that we'll do every week. So let's say we have a story about the moon, rather than have me go, well, we're already at 30 minutes in this episode. If you want to hear about that, we'll do it in a follow up. We'll just do the whole story. So we'll, we'll talk about the moon for an hour and a half. You know, we'll get into all the stuff that I have to cut from the episodes. And hopefully it'll be easier because it's going to be audio only. Although I'm going to roll video for you guys that want to see it. So that's going to be coming up. And on the podcast, there we can get into stuff like John McAfee and 9-11 and all those fun conspiracies that I definitely can't do here. We can get onto them there. Uh, and just to be sure, we, uh, we had a meeting with Spotify and asked them about that. Like, yeah, here's what we're thinking about doing. And they were like, that's fine. You know, there's the 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 few categories that they don't want are they're like obvious, you don't want them on there. And you know what they are. John McKenzie, I love AJ's golden stream. Not since this prostate issue. Um, but I appreciate that. Mega pints there, Lori uh Carrig, I see you. Aussie Walks is a believer. Um, does, I, how, how about that rest tongue stuff we were all discussing? I don't remember that from the Patreon. I don't remember what we were discussing. Remind me what I think we'll do. We talked about this in the Patreon chat as well is there's a lot of questions that come in from, from the, the Patreon members in the Patreon stream before the show. I think Victoria is going to set up a place where Patreon members can just hang out there during the live stream and ask questions so that yeah, I try to follow the, the chat on this and it's, it's bananas. It's like, Oh, that was a good question. It's gone. I don't know what he said. And then it's just, another, and then it's gone. So that's why sometimes you see me freeze and I'm, I'm not Mitch McConnell. I'm actually looking for something interesting. Um, so maybe we'll have the disc, uh, discord chat going as well. And then I can, it, you know, it won't be, 8,000 people. It'll be 80 people. It'll be a lot easier to follow. Might entice some folks to join Patreon, which would be wonderful. There's hybrid dropping the link in there for you. <laughs> Keep the lights on. So maybe we'll do that. And then it'll be a little bit easier for me to communicate and answer, answer the questions. GPRS is fearing crab cats ghost. Ooh, that's scary. Yeah. So in the Patreon chat tonight, everyone was telling ghost stories. So that was kind of fun. A little creepy, kind of fun. Colorado kid, cocaine, Mitch, boo. And we don't, we don't do politics. I poke fun at everybody. I may poke fun at some people more than others, but some people are in politics are more pokeable. You got to admit. Uh oh, bumper head. My vertical eyelids blinked. Careful, careful. Uh, Jesse Rooney pyramids in Antarctica. Yeah, that's coming up. There's not a lot of photos of, of that, so that's going to have to be a lot of theater of the mind, but that story is coming up. I think I might mix in just other – and Jenny, keep an eye on this. I know we, we've got Antarctica in the list somewhere. So pyramids, but we can mix in the guy, and I forget his name, but he worked or works down there, and he's got all kinds of crazy stories. And when we get up to it, I'll, I'll, we'll be able to find him. I think he was part of Disclosure. So – uh Asha Moreland, more, po more pokeable. Yeah, some of them are more pokeable. Yeah, so that so we'll do a, a whole Antarctica episode because that's um, there's a lot going on down there. And this guy, I can't remember his name. I'm looking to see if anyone says it in the chat. I can't remember his name, but he's got a lot of lot of stuff. Eric Hecker is correct. TF observe TF two observer is the winner. 
you just won yourself 15 minutes privately with Victoria. Use them wisely. Is she down there shaking her head? or she, No, she's down there pumping her fist. She's into it. She's excited for it. A couple of super chats. John Snow Radio, $5. Thanks, Wife House team. Love a new mystery for Gino. Uh, my favorite rabbit was stolen by none other than Senator McConnell. Uh, Mitch better have my bunny. All right, so that's funny, but uh, the simulation happened again. Because that chat came in an hour ago. And I just mentioned Mitch McConnell. And how often does he come up in a conversation? Not in my life. Very rarely is he part of my social conversation. But the simulation, everything is connected. And those are just the, the programs. They just intersected. Um, but Mitch Better Have My Bunny is hilarious. Uh, John Snow. Uh, Jeffrey for $10. Greetings, programs. Let the lizard people on planes. They found her. Um, Tiffany Gomas, something like that. So, I mean, so often to become accidentally famous, it's so sad, and but it's also hilarious. I mean, she had to, she had to delete everything. LinkedIn's gone. Facebook's gone. It's all gone. Um, I mean... In like the New York Post, they're publishing her pictures of her house. That's uh, that's a bit off size, but you know, if you if you're gonna scream and do the the pointy fingers <laughs> on a plane, you're gonna be famous, Tiff. So enjoy it, Jay Stone. Thank you for the ten dollars. Just want to say thank you for all your content. Thank you for supporting Jay Stone. I appreciate that. I couldn't do this without you guys. Um, it is not easy to do. Not easy to keep this thing going. Uh, for our drums for $20, sometimes ghost encounters are friendly. At my grandma's funeral, I distinctly smelled her presence right next to me. Yep. As a kid, she would always bring McDonald's. And it was her sadly smiled yet comforted. Love my Jima. Love Jima, who smells like a, like a sack of fresh fries. Um, I have read that it's very common for people to smell smells of dead lo loved ones. You know, speaking about my dad, he had a, he had a lot of medical issues. And uh, during surgeries, at least four times, I don't know how many, he died on the table and was brought back. And during one of those times, he distinctly smelled his mother's perfume. And then another time, he saw her and had a conversation with her. So... Um, so yeah, that's that's something that that's a story that you hear a lot is that is that you you sm you smell them. Hopefully, your loved one smells good. You don't want some stinky uncle showing up. Seamus M is there for twenty dollars. Fun episode. Have fun with after files. I'm gonna be outside with friends, whiskey, and a heated pool. Oh, that sounds better than this, Seamus. Peace, Y Files fam. Be safe. Be kind. And know you are appreciated. You're appreciated too, Seamus. Although he's not here to to hear me say it, but I mean that's a. That's a supporter right there. He drops 20 in the in the till and then he Fs off to the hot tub. Right? That sounds great. Blaine5700 is there in Gino's lab, oh so keen. He brewed up a Java 51 dream with Caveman Coffee Co. and the Wi Files in tow. They explored Mel's hole, quite the scene. All right. Was that a was that a limerick? I, I couldn't I couldn't really get the, the 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 rhyming the rhyming meter on that, but nicely done. And there is oh, Jonathan for fifty bucks. I'm so tired. I'm a human. We've been together too long. <laughs> I should have my own show. The more I'm sick, I am wrong. So while he lay there asleep, I had my laptop in bed. So I logged into Reddit. There was a message that read Do you want to be on YouTube? Do you like to entertain? Come and be my co-host You only need half a brain If you like aliens and pyramids Conspiracies get you high Then you're the co-host I'm looking for <laughs> Message 
It's me and the fly. Question for Jen. Oh, we're getting we're getting applause. All right, that was uh, I thought that was a fun one. That and, was a fun one. And judging by that song, it sounds like there's probably some more lyrics coming. Because yeah. it looks like he's applying for a job for a co-host, but it turned out he may already be. Well, cat, you already know how the escape song goes, right? You already know. Yeah. All right, question yeah. for Jen. How does a bachelor who is into conspiracy theories land a beauty without chasing her off with crazy ideas, asking for a friend, also thoughts about bringing a hecklefish plush on a first date? Well, Jonathan, <laughs> it, it doesn't hurt to be hung like a horse. Start there. And uh, I'm not, not, not me, of course. My voice is too high to, to even pretend. But Jen, do you have an answer? Well, I would say... Leave Hecklefish at home on the first date. <laughs> He's got a thing. You know, you don't want to distract her. I will be a strict but fair lord of these lands, right. and my serfs will come to idolize me. That's that's not how to get lucky? No. 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 Uh, just be yourself, Jonathan. What about bringing Mr. Naughty on the first date? No. No. Let's not bring any... Stuffed animals. What number date or, does Mr. Naughty show up? Three. Um, you wait. Three. At least a third. At least a third. At three. <laughs> Victoria was very quick with her answer. She was. She was. <laughs> but every time I've seen her husband, he's always got a huge smile on his face. <laughs> All right, Jonathan. Thank you for the support. This is very generous. Melissa Taylor, uh, for Nugget and Bean. Uh, those are my boys. You just saw one. Uh, Walking, where is he? That was Nugget. Uh, Pebbles that has advice for you, Jonathan. Just be yourself, dude. Um, unless you're not awesome, then then be someone better. And look, but just be yourself. That's great advice. There's that theory that nobody, like when you're getting to know a new partner, that's the that's a fun part. Those that the early part, but it's very awkward and no one is being themselves. Even if they're being honest, there's still reservations or some type of personality. So the, the theory is a hundred days. It takes a hundred days to, to know someone for all their self, to see all their stuff. And with Jen and I, it took way fewer than a hundred days. I mean, I, 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 ha I had her figured out by the third hour, I think. Hey, well, whatever, however long it took you to get drunk. Well, that was a <laughs> long time ago. That was a long time ago. Filtered Arizona Cowboy one. Yeah, you know, it depends. I have to filter myself. But as you can see, Jen is, I, I was going to say Jen is easy, but you would have misconstrued that talking about a date. But she's, you know, she goes with the flow. You, I, I. There's no joke that's too raunchy for her. In fact, her sense of humor is filthier than mine. <laughs> By the way, he says Cthulhu three three three. Who is adopting Wayne? <laughs> no, Wayne is one of Hecklefish's adopted guppies. So I, I, I guess he came with the name. I, you know, I don't know. But that's funny that you paid that close attention. Uh, Black Canvas is there. If I ever become a ghost, I am going to spend my time at the bar for some booze. Ah, cavity. Ha, ah, get it, booze. Ha, ah, great episode. I get it. I get it. Oh, my goodness. Did you hear that? Oh, boy. It's live stream amateur hour again. There's the dude 087, very reliable. Hey, I wanted to ask your opinion on what happens now that David Grush spilled the beans. What's the plan going forward? What's next? Ah, this could be a can of worms, dude 87. It really depends on, you know, is he is he still government? Then what happens next is what always happens. Someone talks about UFOs in front of Congress and then nothing. But if he's legit, then I think we're going to find out some stuff. Because um, cause Rubio and, and Gillibrand, I think, really want to know. I don't know if Deep State is going to tell them, but I think they really want to know. And it's great that it's a 
Democrats and Republicans agreeing on one thing, and that's where the aliens at. And that's a good thing. Buzz Darkin is there uh, with the Mastiffs. Thank you for the informative look into detecting the spirit realm. I don't know if I, I don't I don't know if those things work, Buzz, but I guess it depends on your belief system. It was funny in the chat during the premiere. And the episode was, I guess, about 30 minutes. So 20, 20 minutes of it was just talking about all the stuff, the gadgets and what people are finding. And then we had the chapter break. No, we ended the chapter with, so ghosts are real, right? And then someone in the chat was like, uh, and uh, debunking initialized. And I thought that was funny. It was like, yep, here we go. So, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I want to believe, but I'm not so sure. Uh, label, 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 you crew, la la oh, lave, love, lave, lave, love crew. I found out today that I'm having 23rd surgery. I needed this. Thanks. I'm sorry to hear that. And um, that 23 surgeries doesn't sound good. Um, but you made it through 22 of them, okay? So I hope this one goes well for you. Thanks for hanging out. And um, thanks for supporting the channel. There's X rocks X X the big X is here. And you're wondering wondering if you could take a look at the current situation in Peru. Yeah, crazy stuff going on in Peru right now. The reports of encounters with aliens in a village by the jungles of the Amazon. The government of Peru saying it's gold miners with jetpacks. Yeah, and there's video of it. There's video of it. Um, if I had more time this week, I would have got that together for you. I didn't have time for show prep. But uh, maybe next week, maybe next week we can get into it. Crazy stuff in Peru. There is Paul, very reliable. Thank you, human. Maybe now we can get some indoor plumbing for this bowl. Ugh, it smells like a dumpster full of used baby diapers in here. I could have done some data collection or something. Haha, <laughs> I literally own a cemetery with around 170 headstones as part of my acreage. Keep it in mind if you ever do a follow-up. That that's crazy, and I, I, I'm assuming that they're not all his family. Can you imagine that? You buy you buy a chunk of land, and there's just so many corpses, so many corpses. Chris McDaniel, thank you for the ten dollars. I stopped ghost hunting because there wasn't enough meat in it. Yep. Yep. Wisco, any episodes coming up on giant sea monsters? Man, I don't want to do sea monsters. Is there any such thing as sea monsters? Uh, Gino's giving a thumbs up. You know, someone, someone, uh, every once in a while, someone asks for the Loch Ness monster, and it's like, what, what else could be said about Nessie? But last week, Gino said that that megalodons might be real. Now that's that's interesting. Danny Ann says family plots used to be a thing. Yeah, yeah, but I, I don't, I don't think, I don't think that acreage has like been passed down through Paul's family. I think he acquired that land, so it's another family's corpses. That's weird. All right, I'm going to ask you in the chat: Are you going to be buried or cremated? How are you going out? Cremated. This me. I, that's it. Ashes in a jar. And you don't got to sprinkle them. I'm not going to care. <laughs> Jason, don't do sea monsters. I, I'm, I'm not going to do sea monsters. Austin's going to be cremated. Um, Brenton Barnes says I'm not dying. So that's that's one way to solve it. A lot of cremated. I feel like that's more of a thing now. I could be wrong about that, but it feels like more of a thing now. Char is going to go with the Viking funeral, right? On the boat down the river. And then the warrior shoots the arrow. That's the way to do it. Uh, donating body to science. Psychoholic. That's that, you know, that's noble to do. And I'm glad that you do that. I'm glad that there are people like you that are better people than me that do that. But, um, you won't remember this because you're too young, but Dennis Miller used to have a great bit about people donating their body to science, and he said he's not going to do it because what if it turns out – because nobody knows. What if it turns out that you need your body later? And I think the joke was, um, you know, thank you for 
hey, um, thank you, you died too? Thank you. You donated your eyes to science. I got your eyes. Thank you. Uh, and it's like, where, where are you? So, yeah, you don't know what happens. Uh, Jordan's random thoughts going to be cremated and put in a firework. Mechta Kendall is going to be embalmed. Oh, boy. Jam's going to be mummified. Living Dead Girl is going to be composted. Not surprised to hear that from a uh, user named Living Dead Girl. Matt Hunt's going to be eaten by my cat. Yeah, and that's a th that's a thing. And cops will tell you this. There's not a lot of reporting on it. Like an, if an if, like you you if you're an old person, you, you die alone in your apartment building, and you've got a cat, and the cat doesn't get fed for a while. When they finally find that body, he, might, <laughs> he, he he he's he's missing his stomach. Cat's gonna eat. Donating my body to science fiction. Did you guys read Gerald's game? When Gerald died and she was tied to the bed. And uh, he has a great chapter where he's telling the story from the dog's point of view. And the dog is starving and he really does. And, but his, and his owner's there and he, he can smell his owner and he's starving, but he knows it's bad and it's wrong and he can't. He's doing everything he can to not. That was a disturbing book, Stephen King. That was a disturbing one. Not as disturbing as his Twitter feed. Kiki JD for $20. I'm off to Vegas on Saturday for a week to see family. I'm going to introduce them to your show. Great show as always. Thanks, Kiki. Nick Lowe wrote a song about a dog eating its owner. Diana Quinn, Gerald's Game Rocks, the creepy guy in the corner. Ooh, I know, right? Remember the, remember the scene in the courtroom? <sighs> Jane Hopkins, when she dies, she's going to be made into a talking plushie. Oh, he likes it. Well, that's a great idea. Let me know, and we'll we'll donate the uh, the hecklefish voice boxes. So he, so his voice will come out every time someone squeezes your belly. Rogue RR is going to be reincarnated. Ohio, Kyle, AJ, there's police body camera with some paranormal activity caught. Um, you got to, you got to, I don't th know if you can link that in the chat, but that is, that is why we need the Patreon chat in another window here. Is so I could tell you, A, go join Patreon because we need the support and B, drop that link in there and then we can, we can get that stuff on the, uh, on the show. JPML, thank you for $20. I'm usually meh about ghost stories, same, uh, but still an amazing show. I hope y'all keep providing everyone with amazing sense of wonder for a long time to come. Me too, JPML. Pardon me, that's rude. Yeah, I'm not into much into ghost stories either, but I tried to make that episode as, as fun as I could. Did you guys catch the, uh, the poltergeist? <laughs> the poltergeist scene? I saw, I, I, the joke landed pretty well. I saw the chat. Oh, eight, the moon episode is not going to be for a while, but it is it is coming, I promise. Howdy from Tucson, I see you. Uh, Browning, uh, yeah, that was weird uh, seeing AJ at the table in that video. That was when I was on, um, uh, what was it, G the Sim Gene Simmons Family Jewels? We were doing a seance on the, uh, on the Queen Mary in Long Beach, California. It was a long time ago. But, you know, it, if seance comes up, how do I not drop the clip in there? I, it's like the second or third time I used it. It's You, you got to get it in there. And now just to see the reaction in the chat. Very funny. 37 custom toys is there. Um, my super chat last week never posted and was refunded next day. Not sure what happened, so I joined Patreon. Thank you, Wife House Crew. Well, thanks, 37. Um, I, I don't think I re – I didn't refund it. You know, maybe – Maybe Victoria did. She's saying no. I don't even know how to do that or if you can, but if your super chat wasn't posted and you got refunded, then that's great. I'm glad that YouTube didn't keep that money. Ruben Balno, how was the Queen Mary? It was pretty cool. Um, it was definitely, the show made it scarier than it was, but we took, I mean, we toured the whole ship and um, you could still see the episode somewhere. I'm not, you know, I don't know. <laughs> 
if it really holds up. But but we did go like down to the boiler room, which was super scary. The scariest room was the swimming pool room because it's it's this cavernous room. It's probably three stories tall in there, and the pool's down there. It's not there's no water in it, so it looks like no one goes in there. So it looks like a horror movie set. And because of the, the cavernous shape of the room, it, there's huge echo and it's a boat. So it's damp and you hear leaks like, boop, boop. it was definitely creepy in there, but it's hard to be, to get like really scared when giant Gene Simmons is there. And then there's a camera crew and you know, there's a boom mic following you around. It's, you, you, it kind of take it out of the moment. Um, but that guy you saw, I forget his name, J. Michael something. He was a real medium, and he took everything that day very seriously. So when he says on the show that spirits were coming through him and talking to Gene Simmons, he meant it. That he that was not um, everything else in reality TV is fake. But he was serious about it. But the Queen Mary was was okay. It was pretty cool. It was a surreal moment to be sitting with uh, with Gene and Shannon having a cup of coffee, talking about stuff. Like I'm sitting here with Gene Simmons having a coffee. This is very strange. Arthur Mays, thank you for the nine Have you heard of the Skull Experiment? I have. And we have uh, an episode, I believe, coming up on the Skull Experiment. That's um, that's end of life, near death experiences. So we will be covering that. Um, Dinner Time was a big Opie and Anthony fan back in the day and loved when they made fun of Gene. Yeah, O and A went hard on him. Yeah, I was a big fan of ONA as well back in the WNEW days in New York. And they both still do stuff. I know Ant is still doing his thing. He's still got a podcast. I saw, I mean, I saw him, I see him on Rogan from time to time. You know, Joe is very grateful to those guys for essentially creating the podcast format on radio. Um, I know Opie still does stuff. I don't, but I, you know, I don't think it's consistent. But I, I check in on both those guys to see what's going on just for the nostalgia of it. And, um, you know, fun fact, I took over Opie's spot on WBAB radio back in the day in the overnights. Shonen Fan 4 for $10. That volley volleyball net catching ghost has to be comedy. It's not. That was legit. EVP, that was legit. And at the bottom of the episode, I linked to that video. And the whole channel is full of that stuff. And they're just a lot of re-uploads. It's a weird channel. I don't know what country that is. I'm assuming that was Arabic, but I don't really know. Um, but they, they play it off like it's legit, but it was clearly a guy with black shoe polish on, you know, cause like his underwear <laughs> falling off, you see his pasty stomach. Um, definitely not, not scary. Uh, EVP reminds me of Michael Keaton's white noise. Yes. What's uh wife opinion on Tiffany, not real Gomez AirPods explanation cover story. I didn't, I haven't heard her cover story yet, to be honest. Um, you know, this is the type of, like in radio, when you do a long show, you've got commercial breaks and you've got top of the hour breaks. And that's a time where you get coffee, you take, you use the restroom and you can grab some show prep on the fly from stuff that comes in. So that's what I need to do here. I need to, I need to do, I need to do breaks and top of the hour breaks so I can go and grab Tiffany's AirPods explanation and play that for you guys. We'll work on that. We're caught betwixt between right now because I'm still in the shithole warehouse. Everyone else is in the, the beautiful new studio. Once we get over there, the format will get dialed in and uh, we'll be a little bit more prepared because this is not a professional uh, operation at you all. You think this passes for a live stream? Think again. Skylar, the creator, the earth used to be purple. I love our chat. Stu Farrell for a 10 pound. Excellent upgrade points. I think we were designed to fear death for survival, but be open to an afterlife for sanity. The best answer to what happens after death is I don't know. All great points, Stu. You know, you, you can't continue the species if we're not afraid to die. You know, we need to, we, we need to stay here. And I believe, I mean, every animal has an instinct to survive, right? I, I with mammals, it's easier for us to see because it's easier to understand when they get scared. You know, when it, a cat gets freaks out or a dog or a, a beaver, or a marmot, whatever mammal is in your mind, they all kind of react the same way. Um, 
but what makes what makes it so hard for us is we are we're, we're just so aware of it. You know, I, I you know I think I, I could be wrong. I think animals don't want to get hurt, so their instincts are to stay safe. But I don't think they're worried about like, oh, that car almost killed me, and I would have I would have saw grandma on the light. I don't think cats think like that. But I can't be the only one here who had a cat who was sick who just walked off into the sunset one day. Just walked off. That was my buddy boy. Just was sick and buddy, buddy, and that's it. So he knew. Uh, oh, wait, when is Hecklefish Plushy getting dispatched? I'm told next week. Victoria's freaking out and saying yes next week. Uh, Rawhide, long time, first time. Hi from the Cali Karaoke Couple. All right, my wife, Laura, Miss Kitty, and love the Y Files. Watch every episode. Keep up the great work. Well, thanks. Thanks for your support. And thanks for the for the karaoke music. Lawrence North are 50 bucks. Oh no. I do this stupid show just to make a little bread. You know it's not easy to keep my guppies fed. Bill's up to here and I'm getting really stressed. I'm almost out of vodka, my car get repossessed. I come on the stream and I beg for some dough. You say you can't afford it, your money's kinda low. Come on man, I ain't going for that. I just ain't going for that. Human, you got what I need. So hit that super chat, click it just like that, oh you mean you, you got what I need, I need a super chat, click that super chat. The great Biz Markey. Uh, AJ, your team is, uh, is as always top notch. Not sure why I get so many Discord issues on my sound, but I love your work. I get them too, Lawrence. I love the family of supportive members and I can give my personal stories, but heck, let's face it. Everyone has a ghost. Story. Everyone does have a ghost story, Lawrence. Um, what helps me with discord is using the actual discord application, which I hate to do, but when I use it in the browser, it rarely works well, but when I use the app, it seems to work. How are you guys doing tonight? Okay. Jenny, how are you? I'm good. What's going on in the studio? Are you making progress over there? It, you, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's amazing. Yes. And Victoria, where, are you at the studio? Is that your, what is that? Or is that your the, new Vegas? No, the Airbnb. I moved out of the bedroom and into the, I couldn't do oh. cross legs one more night. You couldn't do it? No. All right. So you're at the Airbnb. Um, at on what street? Which street in Las Vegas is the Airbnb? She's not telling you. Uh, Gino, uh, what, what do you got for Gino's story hour tonight? So uh, tonight we got sort of a ghost story. I mean, it's the story of the Challenger astronauts, whether they're alive or not. Um, it's um, uh, an interesting conspiracy theory, and uh, it's one that um, uh, I really enjoy doing the research on. However, I, I want to say I take it all with a grain of salt, but I, I, I still want to say those are American heroes, in, and I don't want to just, you know, try and assume that. They're, they're alive, but it's an interesting story. Well, they were fine. Thumper Squid saying, sorry, I'm late. I was spanking my planchette real good. That's a Ouija board reference because that's that little heart thing. So he's spanking it real good. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Celtica, Celtica. Oh, my God. Gino has furniture. Uh, he's got a chair and a looks like a water cooler and maybe a rug. rug. But judging by the echo, I don't think there's much else in there besides that. And nope. a puppy. Pebbles, you know, story hour is coming up in just a few minutes. We'll do a giveaway in about 10 minutes, and then we'll follow that up with Gino story hour, the challenger conspiracy, one of my favorites. Can I tell my my creepy, the creepy ghost story, that has ghostish paranormal story that happened when we were, AJ, when you and I were driving? Yeah, let's let's hear it. So when we lived in LA, we were going home from somewhere. We were up like by Mulholland and we were driving and we kind of got turned around. And I was like, where are we? And he just said, it's okay, I'll go up here and I'll turn around. And he was going down this street and I just started getting really agitated. Like I, I was getting super uncomfortable. 
I was really agitated. I felt like, like I was just like, I, I don't want to be on the street. I don't want to be here. And we were coming up to a dead end and he was stopping to turn around. And I was like getting super like nasty. I'm like, what are you doing? Just stop, turn around. Where are, I don't even know where we are. I don't like it here. We were I knew at where the we gate. Were. He knew right where we were. We were at the gate. That was the gate for the house, Sharon Tate's house where the, the Manson murders happened was on the other side of the gate. Yeah. I have no idea where we were. And I was just super She was irritated. telling the truth. She was freaking, and it's, she was freaking out. And like, it, it was weird. Like, I was mm -hmm. driving, like, what? What is your problem? I don't like this side of you. Now that I see it, I'm not, I don't really enjoy this side of you. I wish yeah. I saw this side earlier. But yeah. <laughs> I did not say that. Go ahead, Gino. I got a little follow-up to that that I don't think I've ever told either of you two. I was also on CeeLo Drive. Uh, where uh, the murders happened. And uh, I went there right after um, watching uh, Quentin Tarantino's, uh, uh, you know, uh, movie, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, what was it Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Hollywood. So I went there and it, and it was definitely around midnight time. And uh, uh, we were driving up there, and as we passed the house, there's someone saying, and the house doesn't really exist but, uh, anymore, um, but, uh, but the police does. And we saw a person standing outside that we went by, and of course, as we're going by, you try not to disturb any, anyone or anything like that. As we went by, I went to turn around up, up the block so we could go back and check it out. And we both looked at each other and said, did that person not have a face? It was so weird that we both saw that the person we passed, we saw no features on their face. And when you say that to someone and they go, I was going to say that to you, it's, it was the weirdest conversation. So that happened to me right there on CeeLo Drive. And again, I don't think I've ever shared that with you guys. No, that's I crazy. I've heard that before. Yeah. And, David uh, saying somebody recently bought the door that had pigs written in blood on it. Oh. <laughs> And speaking of Zach Bagans, I read that he bought um, Ted Bundy's glasses, I think it was. Mm -hmm. I guess yes, I guess that's kind of, of interesting. Stuff. It's strange to me. Uh, Alan Carruthers, Gino's mic is kind of distant. It's because he's in a big, hollow, empty room. And <laughs> uh, I'm assuming using the mic on the computer. On the computer. We'll, get, we'll get him a microphone. Somebody just said I was a redheaded star child with Wendigo blood. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Robert, ever thinking about doing a Bruce Lee and Brandon Lee mysterious death episode? It would be interesting. Maybe we can cover that on the What Files, more true crime. I avoid stories that have death and victims and that are too dark. I try to keep it just more fun. You know, I just talk to a fish. So it's hard to, oh my goodness. So it's hard to cover a story about, you know, a gunman that goes off on set and kills a kid. <laughs> Rob is there. It's a great show, but I believe Harry Houdini spent the greater portion of his life proving ghosts are not real. I don't even think he needed to spend that much time to do that. But Harry Houdini, he he was very angry at mystics and channelers and mediums. He hated that stuff so much so he actually testified in Congress about it. Um, he it it just it, it really irked him, and it, he made it a part of his his mission. But people are gonna, people are gonna love ghost stories. Sunny A, thank you for twenty dollars. I want to believe, but I hope the afterlife offers more than just hanging around here. Me too, man. Me too. Contami, uh, contaminated. Hi, Jane Crew. Tammy from Texas here. Happy fake birthday. Thank you. Thank you very much. Love the show tonight as always. I don't know why a happy birthday would is a thing. Jason Arthur. So why don't we see ghost animals? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think they're part of the universal soul energy, but maybe they are. Well, I mean, a lot of times they say the reason that ghosts are still here is because it's spirits of people that have feel like they have some sort of unfinished business or are afraid to cross over, and so it may have something to do with our sentience that causes human ghosts to stay around. Whereas animal souls just go off to wherever happy place they're supposed to go. I hope so. 
There's Yannick Yannick Scar for 59 euros. Oh, you like this show? Send me some dough. You can super chat. I hope you know about that. There is one thing that I am sure of. You gotta tip me some more, human. Won't you tip me with some money? Hey, hey, fishy. Fishy, fishy. Don't you know you gotta tip the fishy? Hey, hey, tip the fishy. Tip, tip the, the fishy, fishy tonight. tonight. Scared me with this one. First time I watched that premiere, I am alone, and it's 3.45 a.m. in Germany. Ooh. Um, I don't believe in the – like, I definitely don't believe the ITCs. And I could have spent two hours debunking those. And um, and the ITC YouTube community is funny because they just attack each other's channels and debunk each other's videos. And not re realizing you're debunking each other's videos. Like, so, yeah, you're debunking him. He's debunk. So none of it's real. You're just both <laughs> confirming it when what they should do is they should DM each other and be like, let's, let's do a truce and stop with the, because we're making the kizash, but egos. So those are all fake. The EVPs mostly fake, but they still give me the willies, the ITC channel, which I'm watching it knowing it's fake, but I'm hearing, you know, Michael Jackson come through the, device um robin williams was a creepy one kobe i mean there was they were crazy but they were definitely scary and the evps i think are scary even though i they don't are. think they're real they're still creepy jenny do you believe in evps like you know i you, we joke about it but like you always say that i'm an empath which I mm -hmm. really believe. So it's hard for me to say I don't believe in these things because like, I'll go, well, I'm not going to say I believe in ghosts, but I won't mess with the Ouija board. Like, you know, I mean. That, you won't mess with the Ouija? You're not no, down with the Ouija? No. Won't it's do fake. It. It's fake. Yeah, I don't know. I, uh, Where the hell is that? I don't mess with it. I got the, ah, here, here we go. Victoria, where are you on ghosts? Ah, uh, I would like to believe, but I, it would take happening to me. I don't, you know, I hear stories and go, it has an explanation. I always think so. Okay. Gino. Come on, it directly happened to you and me at the same time. Not once, but multiple times. We've seen things move with our own eyes. Think Anything that happens to a seven and nine year old playing Dungeons and Dragons is <laughs> suspicious. Well, uh, but do you remember, did I describe dad's passing close? Did he, cause he, he was pretty out of it uh, for a long time, but. And what, what he also said, which is so, similar to, to a lot of people passing is uh, he's seen our grandmother. Uh, that was the last thing he said was mama. Uh, and he was, that was looking, his last words. That was his last words. He was looking. That's the most common last words. He was looking like, like right past the bed, you know? Um, and uh, like and, his eyes were focused on something. Yeah. If, oh, he was talking to her. He was talking to a person. When he said it, you know, it was, I mean, I, w I was on the other side of the bed. He wasn't, didn't turn his head to look at me. You know, he was looking at, you know, uh, whatever was on the right side of the bed. The other thing about that is uh, you mentioned the, the smells. After our grandfather passed away, he also had a situation where he smelled the brand new cigars, not smoke cigars, but brand new cigars in the house uh, that, um, that was the smell that reminded um, him of our grandfather. Um, and you know, uh, he never smoked a day in his life, never had a cigar, you know, in the house or anything really? like that. He, he smoked that last day of his life. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> it's a cremation joke. Dad would have laughed at that. Um, and I thought dad was, was just joking around about the cigar thing. 
but I lived in his house one summer. I smelled the freaking cigar. Now I'm going to bring something else up and I might be throwing you under the bus, but I could swear. Oh, <laughs> we lost Gino. All right. Well, we'll tr hang on. We'll try and get him back. There's Logan Miller's there. 2160 had a friend's dad get an odd voicemail that was just static months after his mom passed. Um, he put, he did put voice to text on it and text read, I'm okay. See you soon. I love you. Seeing a screenshot of it, but still don't believe Logan Miller. We have an episode coming up on those um, after, after, after life communications. All right, Gino, Gino, I was joking. Of course, go ahead. So there was a point where you were uh, going to college and uh, living at dad's house. And I wasn't there at the point at that point, but I could swear that you told me a story that you woke up or you were doing something and you seen in a mirror, someone was staring at you. And I saw the lit end of the cigar. So I didn't tell, I just, I was just moving the show forward. But so here's what happened. So yeah, I was, I was living at dad's house cause it was near college during that, that brief time I spent at university. So yeah, so I'm at my desk and I see just out of the corner of my eye, you know, the typical shadow person. And I look up and I see a shadow, but in the shadow is the is like the t end of a cigar or a cigarette. I see that orange glow. And a, maybe a day or two goes by and I just bring it up to dad as like a, you know, hey, this is weird. And that's when he says, you know, and then he tells me the story about the cigar. And I'm like, now you tell me? He's like, yeah, I, all that stuff happens in... That room you're staying in now. And another thing, that, because there was plenty of stuff that happened there. And another thing that happened there, he had a picture of uh, Grandpa that was up that he would put up in the corner of his um, uh, of his mirror, and he had a bunch of pictures. Our pictures were there too, and somehow it would move from the top to the bottom without knocking the other pictures down. True. And then it was only, he had a drawer that, that he used to say he could hear opening and closing at night and he would go over and listen to it and couldn't find anything. And now our father is a police officer, the most skeptical guy in the world. Uh, you, you know, would chase gypsy, uh, sorry, chase, uh, uh, fortune tellers off the street. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, so for him to believe this stuff was, was, you know, almost unbelievable, you know, for us. To listen to the stories. Yeah, I, you know, it's it's crazy. I don't know. Everybody that's asking, Gino and AJ are brothers. So everybody's in the chat's like, are they related? Are Jen and Victoria sisters? Are Jen and Gino brother and sister? We're all a little family here. We're all family. We got one hour on your clock. You know what that means. Giveaway. It is time for giveaway. Um, Envoy ha is correct. The word of the day is Wayne is adopted. <laughs> but here's how it works. If you're new here is um, I, it, the first hour into the show, we give away. Oh, my goodness. Did you hear that? This uh -huh. live stream is so disappointing. Just so, 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 so disappointing. What are, what are we giving away? A $50 gift card to the store or? A Hagglefish plushie. Giving away a Hagglefish plushie. And to, to enter to win, just type Wayne is adopted. Just like you see it, no spaces into the chat. That's the only thing you type. And you're automatically entered. And then we'll, we'll, we, we'll pick you out of the bucket. So Wayne is adopted. And he is. They say that scent is like the strongest, like memory reproducer for people. Correct. Correct. So. Paul wants to know what's the number one thing viewers can help you stop working eighty to one hundred hours a week. Um, if you know any good writers, send them over. <laughs> I mean, that's true, right? Yeah, it's hard really to find good. hard to and find good researchers. Writing. Yeah. We got and we've so. got we've got good peeps, but we need more good peeps. We need more good peeps. Yep. Spiral Mind, thank you for the 1999. Enjoy the show. Hoping for some Anunnaki. Stay puffed. Um Anunnaki's definitely coming. We'll definitely tell the whole story of the 
Anunnaki. Um, Rennie, Wayne is adopted is correct, but this you have spaces in it, so get those out of there. Charles Blacher, Wayne is a doctor. That's not going to work. Uh, TF2 Observer puts in not my kid. That that won't do. Uh, Wayne is a cryptid. Is wrong. <laughs> Wayne is dead. <laughs> we need a spotted head. Is incorrect. Uh, Wayne, Wang is hung like a horse. Is wrong. Wayne oh. is adoptable. While we're waiting... Victoria, isn't there a special Y filer that we're supposed to um, wish a happy birthday to? Yes, there is. Emmeline, isn't that? Emmeline's birthday? Yes, it's Emmeline's fourth birthday. Happy birthday to Emmeline. I'd see that, and, and Hecklefish sent her a birthday wish as well. Aww. I don't know if, if Dad got that, but he sent her a little birthday wish in the email. Yeah. Aww, uh, Wayne Waxhoff nice. is not correct. Wayne is the Batman is, I guess it's true. Wayne is canceled. Bruce Wayne is an orphan. Omakase is the crab cat. Everybody Wang Chung tonight will not work, Casey. Wayne is, Wayne Newton is wrong, Jason. I'm sorry, that won't, that won't work. There is Roger Pingleton, 20 bucks. Ooh, I like the way you tip me. No diggities, just tip me up. I invented a couple of iOS ghost apps. The ER70 EVP recorder and spirit story box. I've seen too much evidence not to believe. Well, I mean, if I had a couple of apps on the app store, I would believe as well, if you know what I'm saying. But there's your plug. Everybody go download those ER70 EVP recorder and spirit story box. Um, but I take no responsibility for any ghosts that you discover. Sunday 8, thank you for $20. If you turn off the night vision effect, most of those ghost hunter shows look like bad improv. Yeah, I mean, um, as far as Zach's acting skills are concerned, um, he's got big muscles. <laughs> it's such bad. Nameless actual. My belief is somewhat that ghosts are beings that are on a separate plane slash dimension of existence, close enough to our own that they can affect one another. I can, I can believe that. Uh, Inter says Wayne is a disappointment. That will not win. <laughs> Ricardo says Wayne is, a, is an adopted Nephilim. That's wrong. Wayne is a moth man. Will not work. What is adopted? Party on Garth. Will not work. Randall, I'm sorry. <laughs> Zach is a tool. That's not nice. But I, and I'll say it again. There's a few more people here. I, uh, I, that's, tonight I went hard on Ghost Adventures. And Zach, in particular, it's not the first time I've done that. The show is nonsense, but I've heard that in real life, in person, he's a very nice guy, and I believe that. Uh, blame it on the Wayne will not work. Uh, Gim seventy seven, blame it on the Wayne that was fallen. Fallen. Wayne is a doorknob. Not do. Wayne will pick me. No. Wayne is a dead mop. No. Wayne. Wayne will the suffering end. You know what's so interesting, though, is that I didn't realize that Houdini was such uh, an anti-ghost person. And it sucks for him because his wife, after he died, like, spent every year attempting to do a seance to speak to his ghost. Like, Aww. for years and years and years and years after he died. It was a huge thing. So I wonder, it's, so, and his ghost probably didn't show up just out of spite. He's just like, <laughs> I'm not doing it. No, I'm not doing it. Uh, Zed the Superfan, Francis, Ouija board, Ouija board, would you work for me? Why, well, fam, quick question. I'm at the age where I have to comb my eyebrows in the morning. Nose hair running rampant. Have you endured this? Any advice? Jen, that sounds like for you. You're Italian. Yes. Uh, you know, Zeb, welcome to the world of having to groom. Uh, it's just a thing. Women have to do it for long. But wait a minute. Don't you, don't you shave your head? Take two seconds when you're shaving your head and just clip those brows and run one of those, those little things in your nose. All good. <laughs> All good. What? He asked. Yep. 
Um, Heather Elliott says wax it. Heather Elliott says wax it, and she would know. She's you know she's hairy. She's a pretty hairy one. <laughs> Tool is adopted. Uh, Wayne has a nice beaver. Will not win. Sorry. <laughs> Kino, all we oh you backed up for a while. All we were seeing is like this much of you. Oh. There you go. <laughs> Jimmy's random content: the information that is you or your dog never goes away; it just travels through the universe. I like that. Oh, I like. I that. like that. Wayne has a unibrow. Bruce Wayne is Batman. Wayne is a duty head. Mike Zarka, thanks for briefly covering NDEs. I watched a lot of videos explaining their experiences, and it's pretty wild. Yeah, we're going to do a whole episode on NDEs shortly. And we've got oh, Didi, $100. Won't you spend money on me? I'm really broke. Swimming here in my bowl. I have to pay three ex wives spousal support for the rest of their lives. Those hobbies, lawyers, they cost me a ton. I think they're bleeding me just because it's fun, baby. Guppies take all of my dough. Now to need braces, here comes Skid Row, baby. Won't you consider tipping? Won't, 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 won't you consider tipping? Just walk on by, call my name. Uh, thank you, Didi. My younger brother died suddenly last week at 43. Oh, no, I'm sorry to hear that. We lived hours apart, but we'd always watch your show and talk about it the next day. This is to show you guys our support. Thank you for such a good production. You're welcome, Didi. Sorry to hear that. That's terrible, terrible news. Um, maybe he's watching the the After Files now. I hope not. I you know I I, I hope he's in the pearly gates and not watching this this, this nightmare. Uh, but I appreciate the support. Richard Holton, why are there craters on the Earth locked inside of the Moon, and why? Are they all perfectly round? Why are the craters of the... Okay, so we tried to talk about this uh, last week. I, I don't understand this either. I feel like the science doesn't really make sense there because, number one, the craters are mainly the same indent size. As, and they're round, which means that they're hitting them it's straight on. But since the Earth is, is there... And the moon is here. Uh, they would have to be coming in sideways instead of straight. So the ones we see should be skidding across um, the uh, moon surface. I don't get it. Well, but the moon is two hundred and thirty thousand miles away, which is and tiny. that's a tiny amount of space. But the impact craters are are done by rocks that are the size of a a bus or even a house. Those can come in even at an oblique angle and, and still hit, hit the way to leave the circle. But if there's no but, atmosphere, it's not being brought down like, like straight down or anything. It still should be hitting and rolling or, or at least some kind of different impact than a, than a circle. Well, there you go, Richard. It's no good answer. The only real answer is that the moon is fake. Permafit 499, this is a prison planet. Look up tricked by the light. And NDEs. All right, I'm going to type, look that up now. Tricked by the light. How souls are recycled in the moon. Is this a soul recycling episode? It is. Well, you're going to like that permafit because we have that coming up very, very soon for you. Uh, Nancy J loves the ads that uh, me and Heckle make. Tonight's show is great, uh, too. Thanks, Nancy. We work hard on the ads because I know it's annoying. Sponsor reads are annoying, and there are some channels that I follow, creators that I love, but then when they get into their sponsor read, it's like, oh, it's awful, and it and it just takes me it takes me out of the uh, out of their show. So I at least want it to be fun. I want it to be content, but there are some weeks where I'd rather just read the bullet points like everybody else. 
because uh, the commercials take a long time to, to make. Don M says, Prison Planet, Attica, Attica, Attica. Uh, my, my crew's too young to remember that movie, but, uh, but I got you. I'm with you. Wayne Dreams is all of this. <laughs> Will not win. Wayne is a pothead is wrong. I think. Could be. Wayne is a dope head. Also wrong. <laughs> Somebody says Gino is adopted. <laughs> <laughs> um, when Gino puts the old filter on his face, you know he's not adopted because it's dad. Well, so uh, are you, though. I did the same for you. Same with my face, by the way. But you don't need the old filter with mine. It's already there. It's built in. Mr. Tor. Mr. Mr. Tor. There is a book that was published in 1994 written by Scott Smith called Pet Souls. I shared a weird experience I had that was included in it. Well, that sounds cool. Pet Souls. Put that in the old Amazon. Avatar. Look at it. I appreciate that, Mister. I'm going to look for that because I because I want to know. I want to make sure that Buddy's up there somewhere. Sour and Celeste. How do you think ghosts fit into simulation theory? It's tricky. It's very tricky to get ghosts in there. Uh, <laughs> Gino, do you have a theory how ghosts? I mean, it, ghosts I mean, in the machine. Yeah, I I don't think that's tricky at all. I think it makes uh, even more sense because if your soul is up there, it can interact with the programming. I mean, who's to say what the programming is? Maybe the, you're, the ghosts that are down here, they're hackers. They're hacking that, that simulation because they got to get back to tell you something. So let me, just, let me jump in for a quick second to say to Easy Ogre, you are the winner. Uh, Dog Day Afternoon is correct. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, so if, if they're up there and they got to relay a message, well, they're, they're hacking into the matrix, just, just like Neo and everybody else. Um, so they just don't have a physical body to hack into. So they have to present it in different ways, which I think is happening over the radio and electrical impulses where they have a little more interaction because there certainly is, um, uh, some kind of correlation between, uh, electrical, um, phenomena and, uh, ghost phenomena. That's true. Um, what if anything says ghosts, the programmers, we are the NPCs. That. That's kind of what, what I'm talking about. Once you're up there, why maybe you can interact with the, um, with the program. And most people don't want to. I mean, also one thing that we, we didn't really touch on too much is there are a lot of different types of ghost phenomena. There's spirits, there's demons, there's poltergeists, there's, there's all sorts of different types of uh, phenomena. It's not just one thing. You know, some, some just seem like an echo of something that happened before. Some seem like they're angry and they're, they're trying to, you know, smash around your house. Some just want to <laughs> look at, <laughs> look at you from around the corner. <laughs> Phenomena. Do, 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 do. Timothy can't thank you for the 999. When my mom, someone's saying a Gino dropping truth bombs. When my mom died, I wasn't with her due to my job. Uh, heard knocking at the door. Dogs went crazy. No one was there. Then got a call from my bro telling me mom had passed away. Love the channel. A plus. Yeah. I hear that a lot. Timothy. Uh, people just know. And I believe that. And I'm fully aware that my beliefs on ghosts are inconsistent. I'm fully aware of it. Uh, Wayne to go hands will not work. Super uh, XC. I mean, Morton Larson goes with a theory that I love is that we all died in 2012. Wayne is a skinwalker. Wayne is concocted. Uh, if you're just joining us, just drop Wayne is adopted in the chat and you enter to win some quality private time with uh, Victoria. Wayne is a Sasquatch. Wayne is a simulation. Wayne is a wacko. Wayne to go. <laughs> Metal Fire Game Time. Hecklefish should take over the show on one episode just like Matt Damon did with Jimmy Kimmel, LOL. I did not see that, but um, he couldn't have made it less funny. JT, for $20, I had a recent Shadow People experience in Las Vegas. 
where can we check to know if it was real? It was a strange experience. I don't know, Jen, do you have any suggestions where he can go check that? Is there a, is there like, is there a line at the DMV where you can? Well, if it happened at a casino or a hotel, I would suggest that you go to the customer service desk because they can show you on the map where the shadow people typically hang out. I go to the concierge desk first. They're usually better at that stuff. So that could be an option. Um, but look, JT, if you're still here and you're, and you're, and you're in that weird supernatural mood, I recommend Madame Tussauds Wax Museum. It's creepy and super fun. Uh, and that concludes the tour guide uh, portion of the program. <laughs> Jordan for Five Canadian, what are your thoughts on LK99, the alleged room temperature superconductor? Do you think the uh, levitation videos of it are real or a hoax? I think they're a hoax, but it's a worthy episode. It could fit in with um, with what was the, what's that scientist's name? Hutchison, the Hutchison, Hutchison effect could fit in with maybe an episode about that stuff. I oh, think I, we should I, draw. I, 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 Okay. Hmm. Do I that. watch the After Files live stream or do I punch myself in the face? Tough decision. <laughs> Ed C. Strong finished tonight with so much proxy data, it's either an underlying reality or a universal need to believe. Yep. True. We are at 1160 in the, uh, in the game. Are you ready to draw, Jennifer? Yes. Uh, there's Blackbeard, Jed, Brendan, Kevin, Redmayne, Scott, Mike D, Mike again, Celtica, Daniel, Adam A, Trell, Fairy Grandma is the winner. Yay! All right, Fairy Grandma. What does Fairy Grandma have to do to get some private time with Victoria? Oh, I can't hear you. Oh. Come Discord, put in a help desk ticket, and we'll get with you and get your information. Hey, kids at home, if you want to learn how to do a professional live stream, watch something else. This ain't it. Sometimes chat hurts my feelings. <laughs> yeah. All right, so go on Discord and open a ticket. And if you're not on Discord, definitely check it out. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of people on there. And, um, and if you want to support the channel, jump on Patreon. On Discord, we do Patreon-only live streams where everybody's camera's on, including yours. So Rolo, fire up your camera. Meng Hai, Pamela Keller can get her webcam on so we can get a look at her. Anthony Bessette, definitely want to see what he looks like. David Dryden's probably too handsome. You don't join, David. No handsome guys allowed. <laughs> Sean Boss is there. Airplane Willie could jump on. Greasy Uncle Pig Tits could become a Patreon member. Jennifer, his name is Greasy Uncle Pig Tits. <laughs> yes. I had to like scroll up just to double check to make sure that you weren't making that up, but you weren't. There it was. I weren't. You There's were Brian Sincerbo for $21.99. Firm believer here. Many experiences in places where I've lived and worked, and one creepy famous hotel confirms their existence to me. Uh, agree that maybe modern tech just isn't able to prove it yet. That could be true, Brian. Um, drop in the chat what hotel you're talking about. AC Baker, thank you for making these episodes so fun and educational to watch. Well, I'm glad you think so. I try to have you learn something. Dark tube, $200. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Human. I want you to know I said human. Thank you for all the dough. Tipping, as I'm sure you will find, always is a good time. Ooh, 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 it's fun to tip the F-I-S-H. It's fun to tip the F-I-S-H. <laughs> Dark tube, no comment, just, just two hundred dollars. We appreciate that. We appreciate everyone's support tonight. It really helps the channel. Um, we just did our giveaway, so you know what time it is. It is time for Gino Story Hour. Tell me something I don't know. Tell me something I don't know. Where Gino Ocean? 
where he go? Tell me something I don't know. Where's Gino? Oh shit, where he go? Jet set and betting at the regular scenes. Worldwide travel fiend with the green. Jack Harry, he's the bone who bears. Big bushes change smell. Fall the air. Hey, hippity doppity doppity do. Where's Gino? Yeah, hey, that's who. And yeah, it's true, cause that's a dude he cares about. He runs around and pops and this holds up. Linda Steele, very excited for Gino's story hour. Heather Elliott, just saying Caveman Coffee, making sure that you get your plug in there. Right on. If you like Gino's story hour, go to CavemanCoffeeCo.com and use the promo code Wi-Files. Get yourself some Java 51. They are shipping right now, so uh, we're no longer in pre-order. Let's uh, get those out there. You'll get it way before you get that hecklefish plushie. So... <laughs> Um, <laughs> so tonight's story hour is, like I said, sort of a ghost story. Um, I'm going to, uh, talk about the Challenger, uh, mission that exploded in, um, in 1986, January, 1986. Can you pull up, uh, all those pictures for me? I'll tell you which one to start with. Uh, we want to start with the picture of not that one, um, but of all of the, uh, um, let's go to, uh, just uh, the fir the first picture would be fine. So we're going to start out and just talk about, about the, the astronauts here. Uh, just going to basically go over what happened first, uh, and then we could talk about if, if there is a conspiracy here. So January 28th, 1986, um, uh, we launched the Challenger mission, and um, we were going up there for a few reasons. One, uh, it was, we were bringing up a large communication satellite to deploy so we could monitor Halley's Comet. Halley's Comet comes around every 96 years, so it was a special uh, uh, time for us to be monitoring it. Uh, of course, the first time in our history that we would have been able to. Uh, we were also um, launching the Teacher in Space project, which Christy McCullough was a teacher from New Hampshire, and she was going to teach the first lesson to her children in space. Also, uh, we were going up there to retrieve a, a payload specialist from the ISS. That guy got lucky. Um, Ooh, so, I forgot about that. Because he was going to be coming back for the return home. Um, initially, they were supposed to launch in July of uh, 85, but it got pushed back twice uh, to January of 86 which caused a lot of uh, questions. Um, it was the record, it was a record low temperature. Uh, the engineers were concerned that uh, the SRB um, rocket booster, the O-rings on it, weren't gonna hold. Um, and uh, of course we know that that's what happened. Uh, 74 seconds into the launch, uh, uh, 25, uh, you know, 24 miles uh, above the earth is when, when uh, those O-rings exploded. Um, since 1977, uh, there had been issues brought up about them, uh, so uh, much that they were redesigning them at the time, but they still, and they weren't, the new ones weren't coming out till 1987, but they still decided to launch in 86 with the older model. I don't know about you, I, I would have waited one more year, but you know. Um, so the day before uh, the launch, there was a, a meeting of all the engineers and the managers at NASA um, and both the VP of engineering and the VP of space uh, uh, of space, the, the booster modules, uh, both recommended postponing um, then and they're on like a, a conference call and then they have a brief recess um, and then after they come back, they say, Hey, uh, they decided they changed their mind. Looks good. Now that did set off some red flags, but when the managers from NASA, after that call called into NASA, they never even mentioned that, Hey, the O-ring problem was brought up that this is a real problem because they're launching at the lowest temperature ever recorded for a space mission. Um, the, uh, the overnight temperatures were predicted to hit a low of uh, minus four Celsius. Well, they hit a low of minus 13 Celsius, it got even colder. Uh, the next day when they were launching, uh, they launched at uh, at two degrees Celsius. It was freezing. I don't know what they, they're, they're thinking doing, doing that. Um, so um, uh, 
when it exploded uh, 73 seconds in, it wasn't exactly an explosion, but the O-rings uh, uh, burst and that's what created what we saw up there. Um, uh, it was initially reported that the shuttle exploded, but that's not what happened. The, uh, later on, it came out that they actually survived that, that initial explosion and probably lived throughout the plummet. We know that for a few reasons, um, both um, uh, Allison Azuka and uh, uh, Judith Resnick both turned on their their air supply, which like their egress air packs, and someone turned on uh, uh, pilot Michael Smith's from behind him. So they probably knew what was going on at that that point. Um, and uh, you know, uh, the last. Uh, words to be to be spoken were by Michael Smith. He said the words "uh oh," and then they knew, "Hey, we got a problem, Houston." So, um, so those were the the, the last uh, words spoken. After that, Rogers Commission was uh, created to to look into what happened. Neil Armstrong was on it. Sally Ride, the first woman in space. Um, another weird thing. I think I saw someone put up in the chat as, as well. Big Bird was supposed to be on that that uh, flight. So NASA uh, did confirm that, that there were talks between uh, the Sesame Street company and NASA to actually bring Carol Spinney, the guy who plays Big Bird, the actor, up on, on, on uh, the shuttle with them. So, uh, so, so that's what, what, what basically happened. We kind of all know the story, we've seen it. So uh, a conspiracy uh, theory came out about five uh, or six years ago actually I think it's like eight years ago now um, that they the astronauts uh, are still alive and, and it's an interesting theory because it comes along with a lot of uh, very weird coincidences um, that if they are still alive four of the there's there's seven seven astronauts that, that uh, perished that day four of them, that might be still alive are still using the same name. Um, so let's 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 go through them. Um, so first first person we have is our spacecraft commander Dick Scobie. He's uh, the one in the middle right there. This is great spacecraft commander. I know who the commander was. You don't have to tell me who the command. I know who the commander was. You don't have to tell me. <laughs> Francis R. Dick Scobie. Um, who is an engineer and a communications expert and a combat aviator from Vietnam. He was like a serious hero, highly decorated. This was his first, uh, um, oh, excuse me, this wasn't his first, um, but uh, um, so now we're looking at his doppelganger who is using the same exact name. Richard Scobie, who became the C CEO of Cows and Trees, uh, which is a marketing firm in in uh, Chicago. So looking at these two guys with the same exact name, you could see a lot of similarities between the eyes. I mean, he, basically, I'm looking at his right eye there. His right, both his eyes are, are almost exact. His hair, hair, hair is very similar. He has same same lines on his head um, uh, uh, and and. You know, the nose, it, I don't know if that's exact on the nose, um, but certainly um, a little but a little plastic surgery touch up. Right. And, and, and let's talk about the fact there was no Internet back then. So people were being able to hide in plain sight um, wasn't wasn't crazy. Um, again, with um, no in, with no Internet, like um, like if uh, police were trying to put uh, people in the witness protection program, it was way easier back then before we had, uh, you know, the internet where people could just go, Hey, guess who I seen and, and snap a picture. So, so you, you know, John, John Pearson just torpedoed your theory here because clearly the guy on the right is much older. Uh, well, this is 30 years later. <laughs> so, so we are looking at a picture 30 years later, this wasn't taken the, the Richard Scobie on the right, that's the CEO of Cows and Trees, that wasn't taken in 1987. That, that pic, that's a, a, re, a recent picture. Now, uh, go back to the pictures again, AJ. Go to the one um, at the bottom with the cloud. 
see if there's one further at the bottom. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. Let me put uh, it uh, in, in Slack. Uh, I thought that that had made it here. So anyway, we're, we're between studios at the moment. Right. We're going to get it dialed in. So, so go to the, the, the picture of the, uh, of it exploding. Um, it's very strange because the, the logo for, um, the logo for cows and trees looks very similar to the explosion. So, <laughs> um, I, 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 I want to see if I could bring it up quickly on my uh, other computer here. Um, so, uh, Let's see here. Okay, so uh, I'll try and try and get that for, for us after. All right. So so moving on. Uh, let's let's now go to Michael J. Smith. Is uh, it here? It is. So so top left there um, is the logo for the cows and trees um, uh, marketing firm. Now it's really oh. interesting. It's really interesting that um, you know uh, he's. Uh, Runs a business for rebranding. You, you want to be some something else? That <laughs> he'll help you be something else. So, uh, so that's Francis Dick Scoby. Uh, I wouldn't wish uh, that name. Dick Scoby doesn't sound good to, to have. I wouldn't want to get that. So, uh, <laughs> the next one we'll go to is Michael J. Smith, who was this was his first um, space flight. He was the pilot. So. Uh, Michael J. Smith, if you go uh, down, uh, I, all right, go to the top right. Yeah, that uh, top right will show it. Okay, so Michael J. J. Smith, he's the one in the, in the top left here. Um, so Michael J. Smith is, um, uh, again, he was uh, a pilot. If you look at he, if you look at him, these two together, the one on the right, the supposed doppelganger, also named Michael J. Smith, same age, is uh, a professor uh, at the University of William and Mary. Um, he has the same smile, same exact smile, same eyes, same nose, similar haircut. Again, this is 30, 35 years later, so uh, you kind of have to do the age regression in your own mind. Um, I wonder if anyone's run the pictures through like an age filter to see what, what, what they get. Uh, that's a, a little more research than Gino does. So, uh, <laughs> so the, the next one we'll talk about is, um, let's see, uh, we have Ronald McNear, uh, who was, uh, the se second of three mission specialists aboard challenger. He was the second ever black American in space internationally recognized in the field of lasers. Um, and, uh, and he had, his doppelganger is not named Ronald because supposedly he had a twin brother named Carl and no records have, have in, in the conspiracy theory videos, they say no records could be found, uh, birth records could be found with Carl. So of course they're going to look like, like if they're supposedly, um, uh, twins. Now it's really interesting because besides Ronald, there was another, another, um, uh, specialist on board, Ellison uh, Onizuka, um, who was the first Asian American in space. Uh, he was uh, posthumously uh, um, promoted to the rank of colonel. Uh, can you bring him up? Okay, there he is on the left. Yeah, there he is. So, strangely enough, he also was a twin. So, here we are, we're looking at Claude, his twin brother, that obviously I can't say, hey, uh, his, his nose looks exactly the same, eyes look exactly the same, because they're supposed to be twins. Now, what's odd is I don't know how, how the math works, but there's only been about 800 astronauts ever. So for two astronauts to have twin brothers on the same flight, where, what is the math? That, that's pretty astronomical. Um, so so that's, that's Ellison on Azuka. <laughs> Oh, 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 my spleen. Oh, you're going to rupture my spleen. Now, interestingly enough, uh, he brought with him a soccer ball that his daughter um, uh, won a championship game uh, with. And uh, he brought it into space with him. And it was one of the few things that was found intact 
from the disaster. And uh, once it was found, they they give it back to his daughter who put it up at uh, Clear Lake High School and uh, was on, on display. Now, 30 years later, another astronaut was going up into space and, uh, and let's see if I got his name. Um, 30 years later, uh, another astronaut uh, was going up into space, Shane Kimbrough, and he brought that, he asked, he also had a daughter who went uh, to Clear Lake. So th they asked if he could bring the soccer ball with them and the soccer ball actually made it into space um, at, uh, went to the ISS. So there's uh, pictures of it floating weightless, if that's true. But uh, there, there, there is pictures of, of the soccer ball went, did make it into space. So, uh, so the next one um, we have is um, is let's go to uh, Christy McCullough, of course. Now, Christy McCullough is probably the most famous of, of all of them because she was the teacher um, and a um, and a civilian. So she was uh, part of the teacher in space program. She's the first teacher uh, flying space. She beat out eleven thousand people uh you know who had who wanted to go up there um you know i'm sure all eleven thousand of them were pretty happy uh that they didn't make it and so uh her doppelganger is not named christy mccullough her name is sharon christy mccullough now strangely enough christy mccullough the original that passed away her real name was sharon christy mccullough she was going by her middle name so Sharon Christy McCullough on the right became a Syracuse professor. Uh, and again, if you look at these two next to each other, this one's kind of harder for me to see than any of the others. Has a similar hair, uh, similar eyes. Um, the mouth doesn't exactly do it for me. Uh, this, but uh, so out of all of them, this one was kind of the hardest one for me to, to, to tell. Um, now, uh, the next one is Judith Resnick. Now, I feel like this one is the most um, crazy coincidence because Judith Res Resnick was, she was a Challenger mi mission uh, specialist. Um, she was one of, the, one of the three of them. She was the first uh, Jewish person in space, the second woman in space after Sally Ride. Uh, she was a software and procedure developer um, uh, for NASA. Now, this Judith Resnick on the right has the same exact name, same same age. She became a Yale law professor and she teaches procedure law. So she's even working in the same sort of field. Um, if you look at her, uh, she has the same, same eyes. Her eyebrows are the same, the nose, the hair. She even has the same mouth lines on the side there, which, you know, hard, hard to to fake and the same mannerisms or hands and, and I um, see you go back to the pictures. Do we have a video there? Is there any of those a video? It, no, there was, it was in a word document. Okay. I don't know so, why it's so, so there's a video out there um, that um, I'll, I'll, I'll throw in for you for next week that shows the comparison of Judith Resnick talking at NASA and the new Judith Resnick talking at Yale. And they have the same exact mannerisms. They're talking with their hands, they're pointing. Everything they do looks, I mean, it's really uncanny how close they are uh, to each other. Um, so out of all of them, Judith, Judith Resnick, I think really would be the one that would seal the deal for me if I was trying to push it over the edge saying this was real. Now, the last one, is um let's see the the last one is gregory jarvis and gregory jarvis go back to that first picture there up in the top left gregory jarvis is the only one they couldn't find a doppelganger for now uh he was uh he it was the other interesting one because he wasn't an astronaut he just worked at a place called hughes aircraft corp a space and communications group out of los, los angeles and they just offered him up they like the company was like, Hey, uh, we got Gregory. We'll, ju we'll just send him. So he was going on there as part of, part of his job. So and he, he uses one of the big deep state military industrial complex companies along with Lockheed and Raytheon and so yeah, forth. Sure. 
so uh, a weird thing about about um, about him is he was the only one not found with the others. So after um, they started bringing up the debris, he wasn't found till about five weeks after all of the others were found. Um, and uh, he was found, you know, he was spotted, float, his blue suit was spotted in the water. Uh, again, five weeks after the other, others were found. So he was the only one found outside of the others. Now, part of the conspiracy theory is that he was the only one that wasn't willing to play ball. He wasn't willing to assume a whole nother life. So um, so we don't have a, a doppelganger for, for him because he was never supposed to be part of it. Um, so, that, I mean, that's 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 all of all of uh, going through all of them. Now, again, I feel like Judith Resnick, that is the, the, the closest that um, we can, you know, uh, we could say. But. Some of them are very, very uh, uh, intriguing. Again, I don't, I don't buy into this one. Um, I just think it's interesting enough because of the coincidences. You're never going to find a Gino Gentile or an AJ Gentile that are working in in production that look like us enough. It's not going to happen. You know, it's not like these. I mean, Michael Smith is a name that's it's out there, of course. But everybody else. But hang on. What do the conspiracy theorists say the reason for faking it is? Why? Well, uh, you know, uh, I'm not sure exactly what the reason is, except to get more money in, into a budget uh, to uh, pro, to pro postpone what was going on. Um, uh, you know, as far as the space program goes, it was, it was also the the day of um, Ronald Reagan giving um, giving his. Uh, his state of the union address. And it was the first time they ever postponed the state of the union address. Um, and he gave one of his great speeches, um, you know, six hours after it happened. Um, and of course he was the great communicator. So of course he's given a great speech. Um, but that might also be part of the conspiracy theory. What else was going on in the government? This is one of the first bait and switches. What was going on that we had to be distracted by this? Um, we got distracted by this, uh, you know, and again, if they, if there was a conspiracy there and they didn't actually get killed, um, in the, in, in the explosion or in the plummet, I guess, um, then what better, better way to have the, uh, a huge distraction besides uh, it happening on the day that everyone is tuning in to see the, see Ronald Reagan talk. Um, I mean, it, after this, it, it went up. We it was two and a half years before the next anything went into space. All right, there's the Gino story hour. That's that's a good conspiracy. Um, Jen, people are asking if you could just quickly explain the Van Allen belt. There she goes. There's your explanation. Yeah, it's a fun conspiracy. And um, assuming there were people on the shuttle, what's interesting is they weren't killed in the explosion. They were killed on impact with the ocean. So they survived the explosion and, and were in the air for about a minute. A long minute. Uh, there was a great uh, poem uh, written by John Gillespie uh, McGee Jr. that uh, called "High Flight" that was put on um, there. Well, hang on, is it? It's good time for Gino's Poetry Hour. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, High Flight. I, I, I can uh, do the poem for you if you'd like. Uh, high Flight is uh, written by John Gillespie McGee Jr. and it goes something like this: Oh, I have slipped the surly bonds of earth and dance the skies on laughter silvered wings. Sunward I've climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun split clouds and done a hundred things you might not have dreamed of. Wheeled and soared and swung high in the sunlit silence. Hovering there, I've chased the shouting wind along and flung my eager craft through footless hills of air. Up, up the long delirious burning blue, I've topped the windswept heights with easy grace where never lark or eagle ever flew. And while with silent lifting mind I've trod the high untrespassed sanctity of space, put out my hand and touched the face of God. 
I did read that, by the way. <laughs> that was not memorized. <laughs> All right. As far as poems go, that one is lengthy. A poem. Well, it's also one uh, that I think they use that uh, as well, because uh, part of that was used in Ronald Reagan's speech uh, about uh, touching the face of God. All right. That's a fun conspiracy. Um, Richard Bramlett, a.k.a. Hybrid. That, and by the way, he's the hybrid, Discord hybrid, as he's known to his fans out in the world with $50. After Portland, a little bit in tonight's episode. I'm sure it's 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 going to be fine. Uh, anyone still live there? Doctor Taylor, thank you for the twenty dollars. Let me know if the fish and camel want to perform at children's birthday parties. <laughs> you have to check in with your agent, but uh, but uh, but Hecklefish actually is he, he is studying magic, from what I understand. Is that right, Jennifer? He is. He He's is studying, studying magic. magic. Uh, Nathan Rodriguez, thanks for all that you do. This is better than anything I've ever seen on Netflix. Uh, you're not scrolling enough. On Broadcast TV, hell, anything, never miss a show. The almighty algorithm brought me here months ago. Thank you for the support and the kind words, Nathan. I don't know if we're better than everything on Netflix. There's at least one or two shows that are probably okay. <laughs> I, I, I just finished a Rocky marathon because I, I didn't know what to watch. So like the last four four nights, I watched Rocky, Rocky two, Rocky three, Rocky four, and um, Rocky. Rocky's a that's a great movie, nineteen seventy seven, great movie. The other one, Rocky, I loved every Rocky movie growing up, but they don't hold up as well as I thought they would. Mister T is clever, Lang though is very very entertaining. Uh, Actress four, my one legit and awake ghost experience was actually not scary. During a time where I had lots of sleep paralysis and shadow people experiences, easy to disregard, not sensational, and felt so real. Those feel real. The sleep paralysis experiences, that's when most people experience the shadow people. They feel real. I had one. It was the scariest night of my life. Um, I mean, my, my wedding day was scary, too, but this was worse. Jillian, for four ninety nine in 2007, I saw a soccer-sized ball glowing like a glow stick float and sink down into the floor when i looked at it no idea what it was some people say those are spirits you know someone in in the discord chat by the way we want to discord we want to support the channel patreon is a great way to do it you get all kinds of perks but a great patreon perk is before every premiere we do a patreon only live stream where everybody's camera is on so it's the chat is not crazy like this matthew evans asking have i seen it man of course. I do the Kempo salute at every episode. You know, I um, it man, I think I like it man too better. I tried to get uh, Jenny to watch it, man. It, it didn't take. It, it did not take. Um, yeah, so someone in the Patreon chat was saying that they there was a, a cemetery near where they grew up, and uh, one night they saw a bunch of glowing orbs moving around through the, the stones. Joe Noel says we rock no you rock joe no look at look at those wendigo fingers look how look at how skinny and bony those are you could just snap those twigs right off <laughs> btk can we designate food for hecklefish scientists say not to contact aliens because they may be dangerous to us ghosts too now he likes white castle White Castle Burgers, that's what he likes. And, well, hang hang, on, hang on, hang on. What? No, the, the Super Chats were getting deleted, so I, 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 I had to catch up. Mark Payne, 50 bucks. I get pretty freaky. He's a super freak. The kind of fish you dream about. You got freaky dreams. I get pretty kinky. He's a super freak. But only if you pay me. Gotta pay the fish. Anita! 
a tip. I need a tip. I need a tip from you. And you. And you, human. You and you and you. Hit the, hit the, hit the, hit the super chat, super chat. Hit the button now. Mr. Ballin talks to the man who is knocked unconscious on a college sidewalk, then spent a lifetime with a wife and family. Later, he's staring at a lamp and woke back up lying on the sidewalk, and the whole lifetime he experienced never happened. Yeah, it's a great story, Mark Payne. Um, I read the whole that, – that comes from a Reddit thread. I have read the whole thing um, a week or two ago, maybe three weeks, if you uh, want to check that out. And uh, we covered a, a lot of uh, stories like that. Hang on. I'm just going to find this for the chat. Just give me a, 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 a second. I'll, I'm going to look for it. Well, while while you look, well, hold on one second. Let me add one thing. Uh, since you played super freak there, uh, I once uh, lived in the same place Rick James died in and also uh, Corey Haim, the same apartment complex. Yeah. And there was a lot of ghost uh, activity in, it's called the Oakwoods in, in California, a very famous uh, uh, apartment complex. And uh, there were a lot of ghost sightings. I'm not saying it was Rick James the ghost or Corey Haim the ghost, but they both famously passed away there. A lot of weird stuff happened in the Oakwoods. The cheapest big spender, funny Russia is going to the moon, robot, not humans. Canadian researchers are finding burn boxes where all these fires are happening. Kind of funny, Western Canada is where the CIA was dealing with MK Ultra. Your thoughts? What are your thoughts on that, Jenny? Sorry, I was just reading something in the chat that <laughs> Um, I you know, I believe it. I don't know how much Russia is involved, cheapest big spender. We just we're just not exposed to enough of their hang on. Oops, sorry. Hang on, Austin D hang hang on a second. <laughs> so. This live stream is so unprofessional. Really, know. what are you even doing? I'd be but, me. but Russia does have their own lore that I that would be fun to explore. Maybe maybe we could prove you right. There is Steve Nigglechunks. He's back. Um, Diary Deception Disaster. All I could say is I almost peed myself. As outlandish as the bit was, it applies to so many of us. As far as live streams go, this one is this one is terrible. Um, Nigglechunks is referring to uh, to a reading I did at uh, Improv Olympic for charity with a couple of other um creators i posted the link in the uh in the chat if you want to check it out see a much younger funny. younger me i think that might have been the reading that that won jenny over it was because we met um through match.com and of course you do what you do you google people you try to see things about them and i found yeah, this that doesn't look like you're googling that looks like you're about to eat children <laughs> So I Googled him and I found this video, which was great because it was like seven minutes of him telling a story. So I got to see him talk and I got to see his, his mannerisms and stuff like that. So it's, yeah, it's good. Monster man. I was a ghost hunter for 10 years. I've experienced a lot I can't explain. I even snapped three photos of an apparition and it's a strange feeling being touched by a spirit. Monster Man, you need to join the uh, the Discord so we can learn more about that. And by the way, if you do, look for Gino on there. Look for Brother Y Files. He's always um, looking for stories. Especially late night, I'm on there a lot. So if you want to tell me a story or or get one that that, that will show up on the After Files, I'm all ears. Um, coming up, we've got weirdest thing experience ever happened to you. So you guys think on that weirdest thing that's ever happened to you is coming up the advernaut awesome episode as always would still love for you to cover sky trumpets that's that's coming that's going to be part of an episode with all kinds of weird sounds that we can't explain like the bloop sky trumpets the the taos hum is in there am i missing any there's several hums several there's a few hums. hums but yeah William Ward, thank you for the night. I'm a fish, I'm a lover, I'm a freak in the covers. I'm a swimmer, I'm a saint. 
I do not feel ashamed. Your team is truly and consistently the best show on YouTube. Keep up the great work. Love you guys. That's not true. That's not true. Paul's back with $10. Dude, thank you for the tip. This human knows what's up. Donating your body is, is science is good, but do your research and make sure you're okay with all the possibilities. There are some horror stories like grandma being used to test IED damage. I, and I read that at first as horror stories like grandma being used to test IUDs is what I read. <laughs> Did you read that, Victoria? You read that as well. And I was like, oh, that is horrible. Poor grandma what they're doing in, inside of her. But I think that's worse than the IED damage. I, IUD damage is worse. I don't know. All right. Jennifer doesn't know. Elijah D. Balzek, one, two, three, four. I have a crazy story where my dad and grandfather wound up buying land originally owned by our family with a family cemetery dating back to the early 1700s. Also wanted to get my bones mounted. Wow. Bigger, better deal says grandma go boom. <laughs> Glaucoma read ED damage. That's also very sad. But look, it happens to every guy at some point. Um, Jason says that I should box Logan Paul next. <laughs> yeah, no, no thank. What is he, 24? He's also 60 pounds heavier than you. Or at least. He just beat Nate Diaz. I don't think you, I don't, you know, That's it's it. not like that's, oh, sorry, the yeah, other one. That's the other one. Uh, Logan Paul is the one in the WWE. Yeah, I, I don't want to fight any big young dudes. Definitely not that are going to be covered by the media. Uh, Pulsar says, don't blast grandma. Chadwick says, she mounted my bones. Oh, hey -oh! And uh, Randall thinks that's kinky. Grandma out here saving lives, says Bonds Beastie. Unknown 000 says his fights are rigged anyways. Well, he is in the WWE. I mean. Now, is he a, a heel or is he a baby face? Uh, no, he's the heel. Uh, but, uh, uh, I mean, he has had some real fights. So, uh, we can't just uh, dis discard him and... Uh, Jake Paul uh, as well, you know, that was a real fight against Nate Diaz. Didn't go so well on my bet, but, um, you know, Diaz, uh, fan for life, 209, baby. Rob Ashley, thank you for the $10. Can Yahtzee, thanks for supporting the channel, human. Form a cop here. We back the blue here on the Wild Files. Animals do eat deceased people if they're left alone for a while. Also, I want to be cremated and fired out of a Civil War cannon. That's badass. That's the way to do it. <laughs> I never thought of that. Fired out of a cannon, like on a like an old Spanish galleon or something, with like just young boys in striped shirts screaming at each other. Run out the long guns! Uh, here's a weird question: uh, Submarines didn't they used to shoot out their dead people from the submarines, or am I just thinking of some crazy in the torpedo? I feel hole? like, I, well, I mean. They did that with they fired Spock out in a torpedo. No, but they did that in Operation Mincemeat, right? Well, uh, that's true. They did, they fired that corpse out of the sub and mincemeat. Oh, uh -huh. well, maybe it was a practice that you know, hey, let's get rid of these guys before we get to the surface. People mentioning Hunter S. Thompson style, yes, that's true. We're entering that country. J to J forty nine ninety nine. Ooh, I finally love hearing the phrase "just the tip." <laughs> urn would be an awesome episode. I don't know what that is. I can't Google urn, right? That's gonna just bring up a zillion things. Nope. It's gonna say something. It's listening. Stop listening, Google. Okay. <laughs> That's a Star Trek thing, mate, says Sybil. Wow, Ginger's a Trekkie. J2J's back again. Damn. Oh, damn, CERN. All right, so that, 
So what he says is for fifty dollars, earn would be an awesome episode. We don't know what that is. And then he goes, Oh shit. Let me do another one. I'll do <laughs> it was a typo, but for nine ninety nine, which is cool. All right, CERN would be a good episode. I agree. Er Earn would be fun too. Speaking of cremation, Big Who sixty nine, giggity for five dollars. These aliens in Peru are real, man. By the way, I have Bigfoot puppies for sale. Let me know. I want one. <laughs> Jenny, how are you coming with your Bigfoot uh, r rug? Okay, so I have the head and the hands and the feet are you coming do. on Friday. And then I will um, sew it all together. So. Can you can you show them the Bigfoot fur that you found? Yeah. All right, stand by. <laughs> stand by for Bigfoot fur. There she goes, walking like she has to pee. In the meanwhile, there's Dr. Nan Ferran, very reliable supporter of the channel. Purgatoni, if you know, you know. Stay safe, stay healthy, and know that you're loved, y'all. Square, square. You're loved, too, Dr. Nan Ferran. Very, very consistent supporter of the channel. Riley, oh, oh, there is Bigfoot fur. My Bigfoot pelt. That looks like real big, Bigfoot fur. You, what, you're is. stroking him in a very sensual way. It's strange. Well, us cryptids have to stick together. That's true. You know, they call him Bigfoot for a reason. Riley Squarepants is there for $10. AJ Heckle and crew, thank you, thank you for these videos. I watched every one of them and love everyone. Can you please do an episode on Aleister Crowley? Aleister Crowley, I can't do it on YouTube, Riley Squarepants, but we can definitely do um, a podcast about him. Because he. Yeah. there's a lot of... of like dark black sex magic in his story. I mean, there's a lot of that in my marriage as well, but I don't talk about it on the channel. <laughs> but so he can't do that on YouTube. Can we, we do that? Can we get a cameo of Hecklefish singing Mr. Crowley during it? Oh, uh, it's the Black Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath. I got it. Or is that Ozzy? Uh, that's Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath. I, yeah, Black Sabbath. Um, so uh, I mentioned it earlier, but in a couple of weeks, we're going to start adding long form to the y -Files Operation podcast, which you can get everywhere. Um, right now, I mean, there's a ton of episodes up there, but it's just the the YouTube videos. But in a few weeks, we're going to start adding 60, 90, 90 minute long form deep dives of the stories that we tell. Chat says it's just Ozzy, not Savvy. Yeah, just Ozzy. James Hopkins, was that Gene Simmons along with AJ and Housekeeper Alice? It was. Yeah. It was. I think it might be the first person to recognize Alice. Jennifer, did you recognize that episode? I did. Well, and Victoria was staging was a haunting, and that's the first thing I thought of. Yeah. You know, years later, uh, just like two or three years ago, I hung out with Gene Simmons at the Comedy Store and uh, talked to him about your episode. He said it was one of his favorites that he ever recorded. Aww. Gene Simmons. Susan H., $20. We'd love to see you sharing your videos on your own website where we can join as subscribers just in case YouTube ever zaps your channel. Don't say that. Knock on. Everybody knock. Unless you can talk about whatever you wish, just the thought. Susan, we'll do that on the uh... Oh, her dog thinks somebody's at the house. This live stream is a mess. You should be ashamed of yourself. Shame. Shame. Shame on you. She'll, she'll be back in a sec. Oh, we'll do that on the podcast, uh, Susan, but don't don't jinx the channel. Blushy Boy was on the Patreon member uh, live stream today. Had some good, uh, thanks for telling my story. I get haunting type of interaction too. Doors opening and no one's there. No one there is fun. Always assign someone saying I'm here. Yeah, Blushy Boy had some good ghost stories. He's one of those people that's just tuned in. I think some people are just tuned in to whatever that is over there. LSU 337. Have you, have you ever did a show on remote viewing and the Monroe Institute? I have. Um, look for the the episode on the gateway. Was it the Gateway Project? I think it was the Gateway Project. Look for that one. That's all about the uh, uh, Robert Monroe's audio tapes and binaural beats and all that stuff. It was a fun episode. Kind of wild. Kind of out there. 
Not here. 50 Canadian. That's me in the fishbowl. <laughs> That's me on the YouTube. Begging you for money. I need to buy a little more booze. And I don't know if I can do it. Oh no, I need ten bucks. I haven't got enough. Until we have a mind recorder like in the Brainstorm movie with Christopher Walken, we won't really know if there is something after we pass. Thank you for another great episode. I forgot about that. Wow. Yep, yep, yep. Very creepy. Forgot about that. Trey M., thank you for the 1999. One of the most active places in our group ETPRS ever went was Waverly Hills. Yeah, I covered that on a very early episode on the channel. We went there a month or so after the Ghost Hunters and went six or seven times and always caught something. It's, in my opinion, a hot spot. Can't explain it. Yeah, that's what people say. That, I think I covered Waverly in like one of the first episodes on the channel. It was something like scariest places in the world or something. Bit of a listicle episode. We've come a long way. Darren Bennett for $10. Another awesome episode. My wife, Fatima, and our 12-year-old son, Joe Dave. And I love the Y Files. Excited about the crime channel. That's going to be the What Files. We love you all. The Y Files crew. Love from Cebu Island, Philippines. Thanks for supporting, Darren. Someone's in a headlock in that picture. Is that no. choked out? Noogies? Are those noogies? Uh, yes. Those might be no. All right, we better we better get our um, Applebee's in. Oh yeah. Right. There's Rebecca Beer, Bear Beer, Beer, Aloha, and Mahalo for the awesome paranormal show tonight. We need a good distraction after the last 48 hours. RIP, La Haina. Yeah, super sad what's going on there. And the images coming out of there, I mean, there are people dead in the streets. Really, really it's, sad. It's devastating. Have they found out what started the fires? All I read was just forest fires and high wind. Did they find a source? I, I mean, it looked like the entire island was on fire. It did. I mean, it it, uh, um, it looked like um, Hiroshima. Yeah. Rick wants to say, please. Rick says, please do a show on what really happens when you donate your body to science. I there's a I can't remember the name of the YouTube channel, but there's like a creepy YouTube oh. channel that covers that stuff. And and there was an episode on that where the guys, the hosts of the show, like worked on the corpses on the YouTube video. And it wasn't as gross and graphic as it sounds, but I mean, there's still dead people there. Like they, you didn't see them like sawing through, but it was very interesting if you're into that stuff. You know, in here in uh, Vegas, there's the bodies uh, exhibit, which is real dead bodies that are dissected. Like yeah. you, were, you were saying earlier, you know, hey, you need your eyes. Well, imagine being stuck in plaster and cut into six different sections yep yeah that that exhibit's kind of creepy i just went there a few weeks ago it's uh and like yep. it's I mean, interesting though if you're conscious Chase. you could still see out of your eyes they're seeing everyone coming to look at their cut up body it's true jay thor up his patreon membership last week happy to support the great weekly effort thanks jay thor Thank that you. Really helps. I mean, I, I haven't even plugged any merch tonight. But I want to show you this. Yes. Is that the every week, if you're new here, every week there's a t shirt that goes along with the episode designed by SMK, aka Rob, the official artist of the Y Files. And this is a fun one. This is the, I guess that's me ghost hunting and what hecklefish is in the backpack. Yes. And uh, I don't know what I'm holding there. It looks like a snow cone. I don't know why I'm holding a snow cone. You're holding like a, like a, uh, a what do they call it? A them? frozen treat as I go into the haunted house. That's fine. What are I they like called things in Ghostbusters that they wore on their backs? Everyone knows they're called positron colliders. <laughs> Everyone knows. I just forgot. I'm a little tired. Mm -hmm. If you like, We have the tools. We have the talent. 
If you like the t-shirts, check out Tiny Bird Press. That's uh, that's Rob's um, business. But we don't do unsolicited <laughs> sponsor plugs. I mean, we're already doing Caveman Coffee way too much. Go to Caveman Coffee Co. We'll use promo code Y Files and try the fifty area fifty one, whatever it's called. It's it's delicious. Java fifty one, tasty. All right, go ahead. What's what's Rob's plug his channel? Uh, Rob. Oop, we lost her again. Hang on, let me try to get her back. Sorry. I Technical difficulties here. You want to give it one more try? Comedy comes in threes. Go for it. <laughs> Tom Kassman. Rhymes with ass, man. It's 1999. Hi, guys. Love all the videos. I've heard people allege that you're feds, which I think is ridiculous. However, I think this is due to the professional way your channel started. Do you guys have experience in video editing? We do, Tom. We do. Um, I was a full-time video editor when uh, just a year ago, just celebrated, just a couple of weeks ago, celebrated my first year working for the channel full-time. So I appreciate that. Thank you, Tom the Ass Man. McCass221355 for two bucks has a question for Gino. Chemtrails, are they fake? Look into it. You know, it's really weird. Uh, chemtrails, uh, uh, you know, keep trying to be explained away. But um, as a kid, I definitely don't remember so many chemtrails uh, out, you know, in, in our skies. Um, they're definitely more and more coming out. And it's not coming out of every airplane. I don't understand that. Some airplanes, you just watch them fly and they're fine. And then you look and there's, there's just crisscross chemtrails all over the sky. And uh, again... It, it seems like it should be all or nothing to me. You know, why is some, some planes uh, putting them out? Now, I, I don't, I don't, I think there are also uh, uh, chemtrails that come, that nat, that are science that work at coming out of planes. But I also think that there could be um, something uh, nefarious going on as well. I mean, they certainly are seeding the atmosphere um, and creating weather in a lot of different ways. So I think I'm really awesome. part of it. That's the verdict. They're real UFO fanatic for $10. Great episode. Ryan and Shane are legit hunters and fun to watch. Uh, they are. Uh, what's their, you put it in the chat, the name of their new channel, newest channel. Um, they I, came I thought we don't plug. do unsolicited plugs. Uh, well, <laughs> I've used some of their B-roll in our episodes. You might as well give them a shout out. But they come over from Buzz, BuzzFeed Unsolved, and they started their own thing, which is which is super fun to watch because they were just scraping by, and they they out of the blue landed an investor, and now they made themselves a great channel. Um, they they are fun to watch. I also they're funny because they're it's hardcore believer and hardcore skeptic, and the banter's funny. I also believe something is after death because our soul is made of energy, and energy never dies. It's conservation of energy right there. The, the REM pod is the most legit device. Is it though? <laughs> David Moore for $5. I'm with Jen. As an empath, it's hard to say nothing is there. But then again, what if an empath is just sensitive to any EM field? That's true. I mean, she really did freak out going up to the Manson house. She kind of ruined the, she ruined the, the, the surprise a little bit. Because it's like, oh, well, you know where we are. And then I told her, and then things got worse. Uh, a little little Manson trivia. You could ask your Alexa to play Charles Manson, and I'll play his music. It's not so bad. Okay. Helter Skelter. Jim Leonard for $25. Wife was staying in a hotel in Davenport, Iowa, a few years ago for business. Heard some strange bumps in the night. Find out the next day it was the suite that Cary Grant died in. I did not know that. What was what was his real name? Wasn't his real name like Eugene Lester? It was Archibald, Archibald Leach. Leach. No, that was right. That's that's right. Did not expect Jennifer to come up with a trivia answer like that, but what? <laughs> he just he knows he doesn't have to come home tonight, so. <laughs> 
Jennifer Chesser, thanks so much for your videos. I love the stories and the unbiased research you do. I played with one as a teen with friends. It was totally freaked out after we con contacted a friend's dead relative. Yeah, don't do that. Chucky Manson made music, says Evan Dude. <laughs> Midget Matt says, strange bumps in a hotel. Not really suspicious. <laughs> Jeffrey Adams says, Wayne is adopted. So Jeffrey Adams just, just tuning in. <laughs> David Dryden says, hey, I'm not gay, but Carrie was a good-looking guy. Okay. Um, David, it's fine that you're gay. It's fine. We don't judge you. There he goes. There goes gay David. David the gay man. Heidi Fox for $10. Happy Thursday, Wi Files fam. Did any of y'all get a chance to check out the recent congressional hearings on UAPs? Mm -hmm. If so, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for all your work each week. Heidi Fox, I, I, I'm worried that they're, that it's kind of fake. But we, we have to see. We, we, need to, we need to learn what goes on in the private meetings. What they say publicly doesn't mean anything. And I don't like that Grush comes from a an intelligence like a counter intel background because that's they do disinformation. That's what his job is, and everything that he says is approved by the Pentagon. But he has submitted names and a lot of details to the congressional committee that we don't have. I would love to know what that stuff is. Jennifer, would you love to know as well? I would love to know. All right. Jennifer would also love to know. John Cave, happy unbirthday. You folks are almost the same level as Art Bell. Any story you tell turns out to be so very interesting. Thanks, John. Um, there's Art Bell, he's the goat. There's no way to even get close to him. There's Ron, one of my favorite avatars, Klotzer. Just got back from Lake Havasu. I got seasick. Wasn't too bad as it came in waves. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 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 my spleen. Oh, you're going to rupture my spleen. And he's still working on the application for us. He's going to be a joke writer for the channel. I really appreciated Gino's. Uh, this is Paul F. Really appreciated Gino's telling of the Flatwoods monster legend. We sure do have a lot of paranormal stuff here in West Virginia. You sure do. Or maybe it's all the meth. <laughs> yeah, it's probably the meth. <laughs> That's funny. Jackie Scripps, 300. Whoa. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. They see me swimming in my waist. Send me money because you know that my bowl is dirty. Because you know my bowl is dirty. Because you know my bowl is dirty. Want to smell my bowl? It's dirty. Come and sniff my bowl. It's dirty. My poop is nasty. It's floating. Please tip me because you know that my bowl is dirty. Because you know my bowl is dirty. Because you know my bowl is dirty. Want to smell my bowl? <laughs> um... Jacqueline says, a few years after my father died, I would smell Marlboro Gold and Aqua de Joe in my new house that he never visited. There were a few times when people had visited my home. They mentioned that they smelled the same thing without knowing him or that was my dad's signature scent. That's, that's crazy, but I believe it. I believe it. Um, thanks for the big tip, Jacqueline. She supports the channel on Patreon at an ungodly level. Mike Suarez, $15. Ghosts are weird. I lived in a haunted house growing up, and it was, I was a total skeptic. It wasn't until I moved out that I realized all the weird stuff wasn't a common occurrence in every home. Yep. Most homes don't have no ghosts. <laughs> Richard Jordan. Uh, Jennifer, do you think there are ghosts in, in, in our house there where you're sitting alone right now? <laughs> no. Richard Jordan Seriously? for $20. So when my grandfather was dying, I, I w was watching his heartbeat monitor. That I thought I heard, did I hear a knock behind you? <laughs> the women said their goodbyes one by one. As each woman said their goodbye, a single heartbeat would pulse, almost acknowledging each goodbye. That's a great story, Richard. And I believe it probably was. He was probably aware of what was going on there. Speaking of dying, Jenny, did you lock the door? I thought I saw something move behind you. Is there's, wrong with you tonight? There's the other Lebowski, the millionaire. Another great episode as usual, everyone. No merch for this week's episode. Well, speaking of merch, you can get these at shopped at the 
We do a t-shirt for every episode. Um, I, I would recommend get, if, if they ever have Heather as the color, get that one because they're a little softer. So those are the t-shirts that go with the episodes. And those disappear after two weeks. But Patreon members can buy them anytime. So that's shop to the wifiles.com. It's a great way to support the channel. Patreon, also a good way to support the channel. And of course, your super chats keep us going. I appreciate that. Tedestrial is on the board for some reason. Now we know the reason for his shades. They are to deflect the gen lasers. <laughs> I missed that one. <laughs> you can pop popcorn with lather. Or popping popcorn with lather. Paul is back for $10. The Houdini yearly seance thing is something they agreed upon. They had a secret code board they agreed upon to see if they could prove it. Never did. That's interesting. I didn't know that. When my mother's mother, so my grandmother was getting on, they, she also told her kids a secret message or something that she was going to deliver from the great beyond. But uh, she wasn't very reliable. Mike, go add for one ninety nine. I wish to invite everyone to Patreon. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. Oh, uh, look at look at Jennifer beckoning. Oh, oh. <laughs> Meow, per kitty. Bonds beastie for twenty dollars. I saw a human like entity pass through solid trees. I saw a human like entity just behind Jenny for a quick second, but just out of the corner of my eye. Stop that. I'm sure the cats will keep you safe. And then float up to me and back again, all while staring through my soul. But he didn't have eyes. Research everything, trying to understand it, but I can't. That's kind of what Gino saw, the, the faceless man. But, but Gino, still no face, but you still felt like he was watching, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, he was, he was really close to the car. I mean, within 15, 20 feet of the car. Um, and, uh, and by the way, the guy wasn't there. I just went up the block, turned around and went back and he wasn't there anymore. So, uh, of course, could it have just been a guy who went in the house, but to have that shared situation where we both thought the guy had no face was really, really weird. Photo clerk. My Walmart store is haunt is hunt, hunt, haunted. I think, uh, built next to a hunt haunting hunting camp and native American fort, my peps knock things off shelves, run across the roof, etc. All right, so the Walmart's next to a Native American fort. Did Native Americans even have forts? I know they spent time in a lot of forts, but they didn't enjoy it. I don't know. Maybe like a like a burial ground. Didn't the Brady's run into some trouble with that as well? In Hawaii? In Hawaii. Yes. Those Brady's. Brady's always getting into mischief. Chavez kind of was there for 400. Uh, what are those? Are those rupees? Probably. From India. Lots of love. Keep going strong, brother. Goat and goat. Thanks, Chavez. You appreciate the support. It's really, really helpful. Milky Ways, a.k.a. Darren C. for 2150. I think if you believe in parallel or multi-universe and significant events, Ghost would definitely fit from an energy standpoint. Yeah, that's true. Love your shows. Can't wait for Thursdays. Wish there was a new episode daily. <laughs> I just got a little nauseous there, Darren. I'm going to be okay. There's Uncle Bill's Toys. Uh, gravity well of Earth diverts slash bends the path of projectiles that miss Earth toward the visible surface of the moon. Thanks so much for your channel. Really enjoy you guys. Gino's not buying it. Gino's not buying it. No. So they come in and then shoot instead of the gravity pulling it into Earth, it shoots out and hits the moon like a... There's Mike Schmidt, great third baseman for the Phillies for 20 Canadian. Pretty good Post Malone. Pretty sure Post Malone watches the Wild Files after his recent appearance on Jerry. Love the vids. Keep it up, guys. Yeah. Uh, on Twitter, by the way, you could follow uh, the Wild Files on Twitter. OMG, the Wild Files. I'm on there every day. I'll put it in the chat. Also on Instagram, which I try to get on every day. So um, I kind of called out Post just a little bit. I like him. He's entertaining. Um, 
but he clear like he he brought up at least five Wife House episodes on on Joe's show. Wow. So someone on Twitter, and that's how I found out is Twitter was just kept they just kept tagging me. Yo yo yo. So I watched the episode. I was like, yeah, he's a, he's a fan. Um, no love for the channel, but that's fine. That's fine. I'm not looking for credit. He doesn't it's do on the channels. It's fun to see. But someone said. And tw they tweeted at me, hey, you should go on Joe Rogan's show. And I replied, there's no reason for me to go there. We could just send post. <laughs> Kim Andriazzi is there. AJ, I've learned so much watching the Wi Files. Wish you were my history teacher. Love you guys. Well, I wish I was her history teacher too. What do you think of that? Okay. Gwen Tendo for five pound. Hello from Northern Ireland. Hello. AJ and team, the channel is incredible. Love the videos. The Wi Files is the highlight of my Friday morning. Keep it up. Aw, thank you. That's nice. Nice comment from the Emerald Dial. Steve for $10. I was one of the medics sent to New Orleans for Katrina. Oh, God. I swear a ghost yelled at me and grabbed my arm. But then again, it was eerie walking around an empty city alone at night. So I could have imagined it. New Orleans is a very ghostly, haunted, scary city. And if you're ever there, like on vacation or just hanging out, take a walking tour. Take like a haunted walking tour, which I did. And they show you all kinds of crazy stuff like that. The house where, where the woman, what was her name? She like hung the slaves from the rafters. Remember her? Yes. And the, uh, oh, the who? was she the dolphin? Uh, the lady dolphin? She hung the slaves from the to rafters. Think, I'm going to do an episode about her. Yeah, Lady Delphine. I couldn't unmute. Lady Delphine. <laughs> yeah, so we saw a few few of those, a few of those creepy places. There is Johnny Shabazz for 20 Canadian. Non-corporeal, by definition, means not of this realm. So why would such phenomena be detectable by any corporeal device who are able to interact with this realm? If they give off energy that maybe bleeds here, Johnny, you know, I, I don't really believe the devices work but if they did and souls are energy then i would think we'd be able to detect them she was but i don't know Del man delphine lalori La lalori lalori yeah. lalori madam yes there is turkey lira youtube 50 bucks i used to try the cadillac then I joined this stupid show. The human doesn't pay me much. I need a lot more dough. I need another shackle. Tip the goldfish. Tip the goldfish. I need a shackle. Tip the goldfish. Tip the goldfish. Please view MH370 abduction vid re-uploaded and tell me Malaysian flight wasn't saved from fire by World War II type Foo Fighter orbs. Um, I've heard that. Then compare Taken, uh, Season 1, Episode 1, Beyond the Sky. Opening teleported scene, most astonishing two angles of UFO abduction ever. See, Turkey, this is why we need you on Patreon, because then you can get on Discord and send me this stuff. Uh, but I'm writing it down now because that's super interesting. I can't really cover MH370 on this channel but maybe on the podcast. John Kurtz rocked the hecklefish. Our, our, our Rogers hecklefish for the win. Jesus' two souls weigh approximately five grams. I thought they were 21 grams. Mike Suarez says Nicolas Cage owns that house. Oh, great. Now I have to spend the rest of the day with that in my brain. Thanks a lot. I think I read that. It wouldn't surprise me. He likes that stuff. He likes to buy that stuff. I think he also, didn't he run into some issues and had to sell off a couple of properties? He used to sell some stuff, some of his crazy items that he purchased. Jenny, I'll give you one guess what his favorite cocktail is. Mojito. Mojito is correct. Psychoholic for 10 Australian women. Sorry, psycho psychoholic. We'll, we'll get you next time. I didn't do it. When my father passed away when I was 13, I'm sorry to hear that. I sat, I sat bolt upright from being deep asleep. I knew my father had passed. His spirit haunted me for 15 years. That's scary. 
I know, um, but I believe that you were aware of it. Thomas Ritchie says, ghosts drink caveman coffee with scream and sugar. And if you get that at cavemancoffeeco.com, use uh, the Wi-Fi. They get the best uh, um, ghost drink. That's Java 51. It's a special blend. You'll really enjoy it. Spetsnaz Maj for 10 Canadian. David David Ike often talks about the moon, Saturn, moon matrix, the book Who Built the Moon. He also goes over the nature of our reality. If we are in a sim, then his depend stuff seems more plausible. He's got good lizard people theories. He's entertaining. Uh, Cherry Dunnigan is there. Uh, the night my best friend passed, his spirit appeared outside my second story window, glowing gold. Next day, I heard him calling my name like he was following me. I called him and learned of him. That's creepy. I believe it, but that's scary. I thought I saw someone peeking through the window behind Jen, but I'm not sure if, if it was you just- You can't happening. even see a window behind me, so. I think I might've seen it. Uh, J2J is back for another 50 bucks. Yeah, yo, yeah, yo, moo la la, yeah, yo. Fish really need some money. I need to buy some stuff. Fish really need some money. YouTube don't pay enough. Fish really need some money. So click the super chat. Like that, that, that. That. This comment is just 76 years, Gino. 76 years. Haley's comment. Oh, what did I say? I said 96. Sorry. Oh. Hey, look, on, on YouTube, everyone's an expert. Thank you for spending the forty nine ninety nine for the correction. Oh, we you do appreciate that. You corrected me. Well, yeah. I, I mean, that's the way to do a correction. <laughs> Normally, they're just snotty comments in the episode. But if, if you send 50 bucks our way, we, we will fix it. Craters on the moon and Earth are round because the energy from the, from the impact instantly vaporizes the rocks. The result is an explosion which dissipates in all directions. I don't believe it. Gina doesn't believe it. There you go. Thank you, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Because now everybody's putting things in the comments like something's moving behind Jen. There's a shadow person back there. I blah, thought blah, I blah, 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 blah. see. I'm not the only one who sees it. There is a little something right. What? It's you like, see that? Like right next to the the cabinet there, this looks like something. I see it peeking out there, but it looks like it looks like a like about a butcher knife. Is it? I'm not sure. Is the word? Maybe a hatchet, or it could be a hatchet. You know, this is all funny, but I do have to stay here by myself tonight. So let's not make me well, crazy. Okay. Let's hope someone does. Let's hope someone doesn't turn you into a skin suit. Bigfoot Shaver for ten dollars. See if you can do some investigating on the nineteen ninety two UFO crash in South Haven Park, Long Island, New York. I don't know that one, Gino. You ever heard of that? No, I haven't. I actually have never heard of South Haven Park. I'm going to do a search for South Haven Park. How come? I mean, it sounds like the Hamptons. South Southampton is oh, a probably Southampton. South Haven Park sounds. Very specific, Bigfoot. Uh, no, South Haven Country Park in Yapank, New York. Okay. So they crashed right where the jail is. All right. We'll look into that one, Bigfoot. That's uh, that's our old stomping grounds. CJ, five bucks. My middle school's mascot was the Challenger. I don't know if it still uh, still is, but we were the challengers in the hallways. were named after the astronauts. That's kind of cool, CJ. Cool to remember them that way. I mean, I watched it live. I'm sure a lot of you watched it live. You know, we talked about that last week. And I hang, on hang on. Bruno says AJ is going to be streaming from the couch next week. <laughs> my couch in my house. Uh, my middle school, uh, th thank you for that support, CJ. Richard Jordan's there, $20. My grandfather died. I watched the heart monitor, and each uh, person said goodbye. I watched a single heart blip roll across the screen. I don't know if ghosts exist, but maybe. Was Richard, were you the same? 
one who said that earlier? I feel like it. Different message, yeah. though. Was it Richard, yeah. though? <laughs> That's weird. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Well, Joker says, uh, Jen, the, the lamp just moved. Oh, you guys, stop it. Big Box says it rubs the lotion on its skin. <laughs> it does this whenever it's told. Austin D, AJ Gino, have you heard of the Swedish sisters, Ursula and Sabina Erickson? I have. The bizarre events that occurred on the M6 motorway in 2008, some say proof of superhuman testing non-humans, Google madness in fast lane film. Yeah, I, I, I know that story. I would cover it if it wasn't so, you know, kind of graphic. Yeah. But maybe we can do that on the podcast or maybe on the web files. Uh, Amphibious One says, Jen, it's okay. He looks like Casper. He's probably friendly. Music theory is amazing. Burned our Ouija board as a kid to get rid of spirits. Our neighbor called and said, you've got flames shooting out of the top of your chimney. <laughs> that was the spirits burning. Uh, WC wants to know how high Jen will jump when it taps her on the shoulder. <sighs> Supercalifragilistic says, don't make him get the hose. Aqua Toad, you're close to as good as GGM and H3H3. Certainly better than H3H3. Is that helium three, the radioactive? No, H3H3, uh, Ethan Klein's podcast. Oh, he's, yeah. half, he's half canceled. He's yeah. half canceled. Yeah, he brings it on himself. Adelia for 999, do you believe in ghosts? I don't believe in ghosts the way like haunting ghosts, but I believe there is something. There's the cheapest big spenders back. I meant CIA responsible for the Canadian wildfire fires to hide their MK ultra. Oh, that's what you meant. And then funny that Russia is going back to the moon after 50 years, but a robot, they can't send humans either. I think Russia is going back because China's going back. Um, I don't see CIA responsible for Canadian wildfires to hide MK ultra. Can, can we just talk about that for one second? Oh, uh, we can't because we only got 18 minutes left, but oh, we can certainly get to that next week. <laughs> Darla Bailey's there for $5. I was afraid of ghosts until I was 30. Then I had a spiritual awakening and was never afraid again. Jim, maybe you'll have a spiritual awakening and you'll be okay. Carl Oz for $10. Looking forward to the new podcasts. Fun episodes this week. Well, I hope you, I hope you check it out, Carla. John Cape, ten dollars. The next star Bell. Old stories are now new stories. Please tell all the stories. You make every story a new story. Awesome crew. Thanks, John. I mean, there's still plenty of Art Bell material that we can get into. Oh, Dexter is picking up the order. We better get. We better get cruising. MW Hunter Custom Woodworking is there. Uh, that's the official Hunter Custom Woodworking channel of the Y Files. Great job. Look forward to you every week. Keep up the good work. Lynn's Zen, $10. Can you do an episode of the Book of Enoch? Yep, that's on the list. That's a good one. That's a good one. Zozang, Zozang. Post, Post Malone was on Jerry earlier this week and pretty much admitted he watches the Wi Files. He did admit it. Also, a time traveler from 2047 was on 4chan the other day describing future major events like a space war between NASA and SpaceX in 2035. Zozang, you need to get on. Uh, Discord or Patreon so you can get that information over to me. But you can send that through the tips line or email me, and I will look into that. That would be a fun episode or something that I could maybe read. We can go over on the on the After Files. There is uh -oh, Dexter's on the way. Jesus of Suburbia, 999. Me and my dad, Chris, love you guys so much. Hey, hey Chris. That's Papa Chris. Hot Rod 1976 loves the show. Always excited for the next week, hoping that guy will let me shoot him out of my Civil War cannon. <laughs> Please take video of that. F in the chat is back for $5. Be honest, AJ. Are you a CIA shill who teases us but really disinforms? Corey Zahas, $20 investigation discovery. Did a special on the town on from Drive, New York. It was coined Village of the Damned. Might be a good episode. I watch every week. I get my friends to watch too. We love it. Oh, that was. <laughs> a 
Eric Bishop, three hundred dollars. Whoa! Won't you take Whoa. me? You know I don't believe you when you say you don't got money, won't? Won't you tip me? You know I can't believe it when you say that I'm not funny. I write too many jokes just to amuse you folks. You better super chat me or I'll just keep singing. Won't you tip me, human? Won't you tip me? Oh, 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 oh. Won't you tip me, human? Won't you tip me? Whoa, 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 whoa. Love the episode, but I believe the items works. As does the little recorder that records voices in rooms. Also, a little more extra this week for Jen to get more Diet Coke and maybe whatever her favorite treat at Costco. Oh, sorry about that. Did you hear that? You think this passes for a live stream? Think again. If there are any ghost hunters in Vegas, reach out. I'll, I'll go on an adventure with you guys. Oh, that's true. Ghost hunters in Vegas. I bet there are some here. That'd be I cool. Mean, Zach lives here. Yep. Maybe you can do a little ride along with uh, with Zach. I mean, the show's still on the air, right? 18 years. It's His 18 years. haunted museum is here. Mm-hmm. Uh, thanks for that, Eric. Really awesome for you to... Uh, Put so much into the till. St. Peter, 50 Canadian. AJ just mailed, emailed a very interesting photo that contains a bunch of orbs that I didn't see but showed up on the image. Love the channel. All right, we'll look for that. We'll look for that. Uh, well, that's going to do her. Thanks to everyone for coming out tonight, and thanks for everyone super chatting. It was very nice of you. It really helps the channel. Don't forget to go to shop at thewifos.com. Grab yourself some merch. It's another good way to support the channel. Patreon is the best way. Um, if if you're a little light on cash, I understand. You can still go on Discord. It's completely free, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, Victoria, thank you so much for your help tonight. No problem. There she goes. Gino, very good Gino story hour. There he goes. Peace out. And Jenny, as always, you did a great job. Thank you so much for helping. And thank you to everyone for coming and supporting the channel. I'll see you next week, and Hecklefish will see you out. And now the end is near. And so I face the final curtain. My friend, I'll say it clear. I'll state my case, of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full. I swam down each each and every highway and more much more than this I did it my way I've loved I've laughed and cried I've had my fill my share of losing and now as tears subside, I find it all, it's all so amusing. Do you think I did all that? And may I say, not in a shy way. Oh no, oh no, not me. In my way, for what is a fish? What has he got? If not himself, then he has not to say the things he truly feels. And the I took 
gentlemen, thank you so much. Let's hear it for the Wild Files house band. You guys sounded great tonight. And take care of those waitresses, will you? All right, everybody get home safe. This is Hecklefish. And you know what? I did it. My.